and welcome to this course on learning advanced type scripts the react way what i mean by this is that i'm going to teach you how to use typescript features in a react friendly way being advanced in typescript uh, specifically in react.js project does not mean developing a large typescript code base with lots of complex type signatures flying everywhere in your code base in fact in order to use TypeScript with React.js, you need to let TypeScript handle the types for you as much as it can and only you should step in and define the signatures that TypeScript cannot figure out on your behalf. In this course, I will walk you through several demo projects in order to show you a set of real world challenges that you may face when developing React apps using TypeScript. First, we review some basics. I will teach you how to define or how to make use of IntelliSense in VS Code specifically to reverse engineer the types that TypeScript cannot find. Several common challenges such as typing props, defining signatures for children, and also some basic type helpers will be examined so you learn how to migrate a React component from JavaScript to TypeScript with comfort. Next, we touch on typing states. We will solve some challenges related to defining state hooks mainly by user state by demonstrating a demo project and managing its state by making use of typescript features after that we examine reducers and action types we will implement a reducer for a demo project and try to fix some of the issues and conflicts that arise with typescript and reducer patterns concepts such as passing dispatch actions as a props and using template literals for defining type signatures will be also examined. Right after that, we will build context API to share some props. And of course, we will see how we can have an efficient implementation of context API with TypeScript. We also talk about generics in TypeScript and demonstrate them for you by creating a custom context API to enhance our code. Finally, we will examine some more advanced TypeScript concepts and patterns as they can help you solve TypeScript-related React.js issues. By the end of this course, you will be confident to showcase your skills in TypeScript as a React developer by being able to write efficient and robust React components without falling in the trap of building unnecessary types and duplicate boilerplates. Okay, so what do we need before we start the course? First of all, you will need a working machine, of course all of you have that. But first, seriously, you will need a Node.js installed in your machine because for one of the demo projects we are going to have a very small server.js file which contains a backend API written in Node.js and Express. Don't panic, you're not supposed to know anything about the uh, Node.js stuff, it's just having Node installed in order so you can run that server.js file, okay? Then we will need the NPM, of course, if you want to use the resources I'm going to attach to each lecture, for example, doing npm install, you will need that npm. And of course, for starting a new project for of your own. Then for the editor, I'm going to go with VS Code. All of us know that it's the most common and widely used editor for React project. So we're going to use Mixer because it has some features like the, you know, the you know, we're going to see in the lectures like why VS Code is seriously good for TypeScript, especially with the React applications. And the internet connection I'm mentioning in here is because for some of the lectures, we are going to play with some basic or let me say some uh, TypeScript features that are not going to be kind of React components, you know, very generic TypeScript concepts. For that, I believe I am going to use and uh, a website like typescriptplayground.org so for that maybe you want to try it yourself on that website so internet connection can be something good and useful okay so if you have all of this list you will be good to go hello everybody and welcome back let's start our course and talk about the typescript so in this code sample that we have in here basically in this components folder we have this subfolder called class info we're going to talk much about this during the section but if you go to this file class.info there is a very small question i want to ask you is this class info file is you know this code that we are looking at technically is it typescript or javascript well if you say yes then you are completely correct because here we have this small t which is the t 
for TypeScript. You know, it's not J. So it is not JavaScript, it's TypeScript. Yeah, but the rest, if you look at this code, it's completely JavaScript, but that's fine. You should say it's TypeScript because it's residing inside a TSX file. Yeah, funny. So what else? The very main point I wanted to mention in this lesson is that the TypeScript itself does its best to figure out the type of each element. You only need to help TypeScript whenever it cannot figure out the type of an element on your behalf by itself. For example, there is a very nice and cool feature of VS Code. If you hover over, for example, class info in here, it will show you that hey this class info is an element of uh, it's uh, actually the type of it is just a function that returns jsx elements and it is completely correct because this class info in here is just a function returning these jsx javascript inside the uh, html inside javascript uh, things like that so basically what I'm trying to say in here is that TypeScript is very much powerful and enhanced. It does the business by its own as much as it can. For example, for this class info. And also, it gets help of the VS Code. So by hovering over some of the elements in here, like this class info, you will see that it shows you the type of uh, this function, class info, and what it returns. Just do some fun stuff over here to show this point a little bit further. For example, we have a, uh, let's say, test function. We say test function that only returns a very simple number. Let's say 5 minus 3. Okay. Let's hover over it, this test function, and see. Oh, yeah. So it says it's just this test function is a function that returns a number. And that's correct. So let's change this number into a string. For example, let's say this is a string. If you hover over again, okay, it respects the change we made. So, the main point in here that you need to remember that TypeScript is very nice and cool friend. It does its best to figure out and analyze the code we have and detects the types. In case it doesn't detect it, okay, it's not, uh, you know, uh, figurable for it. That's where you step in as the TypeScript developer hero and fix it for it. Hello and welcome back. In this video, we want to talk about how to specify the type of the props of a functional component. For that, first of all, let's get back to our app.tsx in here. So, as you can see, we are using this class info or course info. I'll just name this function like this. Let's give it, for example, as you can see here, I am displaying the instructor, you know, my name in here. I want to give it as or receive it as a prop. For doing that, we simply say, for example, the name is like that. Mm, fine, but as you can see here, TypeScript immediately got angry at us. If you hover over here, it simply is trying to say that, hey dude, you told us that this function is not going to receive any arguments, but right now you are giving it a prop. What's going on here? And that is completely normal. For fixing this, we simply need to get back to our functional component and tell it, hey, I want you to receive a prop called name. And if you get back in here, the error is gone. But, oh, as you can see, TypeScript is still mad at us. It says, well, now that you are receiving props, if you hover over this class info it says yeah i know that you are having a functional component in here which returns jsx i know what it returns but what about the props which you are calling it or naming it as name now i don't know the type of this name you should tell me as you can see it is any in here it should be any okay so here you can see that TypeScript is not smart enough to analyze and detect the type of the input prop Okay, it only knows the type of the return statement. For here, you need to step in and tell it the type of this name. The very simple way of doing this, as you can see in this example from the previous lecture, we had this test function which returns a string. Imagine that I want to say like this. Let's change instead of this, I say n plus 1. Okay, now this n is going to be received as a prop. And for this n, if you want to specify the type of this input n, you simply say like this, it's going to be a number. Okay, that simple. So for doing this, let me just get rid of this one in here. 
and for the props you need to remember one thing for TypeScript the props are only objects so as defining the type of each object you need to de define the type of each key value in here in this object that you can see this props object we have only one key which is named name for doing this you simply need to say it has this name which is string and as you can see now typescript is completely happy and you should be happy also because now we have everything in a place and also the type of the prop is defined like this if you have more props like let's say name and course for example you simply need to get in this type object in here and give it like for example the course is also string and blah 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 so let me just get rid of this i don't need it for now if you are completely confused in here it's very normal because you say ah props are objects for typescript what does that mean well the other way of doing this is that saying okay so i have props and that's simple okay so you can also do it like this all right but if you prefer this way which is usually standard way you will face it a lot in the code bases there is one small issue with this okay and you maybe have thought about it you say what if we have a long list of props are we going to define everything inside of here well they're gonna be a mess it's gonna grow a lot for doing this there is a basic and standard approach for defining the types for a list of props that we are going to receive you only need to use the keyword type okay and after type you need to mention the name of the component which is class info in here we say class info and it's a very standard approach you, you don't you don't need to have follow it but it's to add the props at the end so you know what it means what is this type it is the type of the props of the class info component and you simply need to just get this from here cut it and paste it just like this and in here you simply need to mention the class info props okay so this is how you fix it exactly if you have a lot of props in here a long list you simply mention the type of each one in here and you only need to mention the type name which is class info props don't forget this name conventions of course you need to follow it that's not mandatory but it's just a standard practice like this okay so now you know how to define the types of the props of a component in typescript okay time for some practice if you look at this folder in here in the components we have this settings folder in this directory we have a dummy javascript file i'm calling it settings in here what we are going to practice is i want you to convert this javascript file into a typescript file okay as you can see in here uh, this dashboard component is receiving two props input name and handle change they are being used in this JSX codes in here and currently we are defining the types of these two props using these prop types this is how we do it in JavaScript so first I have some agenda for you in, in case you want to follow the steps for this practice I'm going to pause the video give you some time try to do the changes yourself and get back to this video and see how I do it so if I want to paste it in here the first step is that you need to change the file extension of this settings.js from jsx or the js to tsx then I want you to change and convert these prop types in here and do it the uh, the standard TypeScript way of defining the type of the props which we learned in the previous video after that I want to define the type of the change handler as you can see in here we have this change handler and it's being uh, put or passed to this unchange of this input okay so try to figure it out yourself if you couldn't succeed in that that's pretty fine I'm gonna show it myself in here and the last step I want to take as a practice is that in our old class info component I want you to add another prop so in here first of all let me change this into name so we are consuming the previous prop I wanted to add another prop which is going to be like this let's say the uh, 
course okay something like this i just wanted to add it in here and of course we're gonna have to do some other stuff to learn them based on that all right so pause the video here go and do these exercises and get back to me and see how am i going to do it so you learn some new stuff okay welcome back so i assume you have done it yourself for doing the changes first of all let me just uh yeah this is fine in here let me close this one the first step is that we need to change the file extension so in this js file settings i'm going to say rename i'm simply doing it from inside the vs code so i say simply tsx and as soon as you do that the tab suite is going to go red and mad on us and that's completely fine we saw that in a previous video first we need to define the uh, types of these two props in here for doing that i'm going to follow the standard practice by saying type and we set the name of the component which is dashboard followed by props and then inside color braces i'm going to say the input name which is i'm going to just copy paste everything from here this is going to be string it's just a simple name and then for the handle chain just to get rid of this error because yet we don't know what to put as a type for it i'm going to say any and for that simple need to consume it i say dashboard props yay so now we don't have that much of any errors i just need to remove this because we don't need it anymore and we should be good to go so now everything's fine right well not completely you know typescript is fine it's not mad or red but what about this any in here yet we don't have to put anything well that's fine you can go with it but that's really if you want to get rid of the typescript and use the any so early that's not what we are trying to learn this course so let's try to find out what to put as a type for this handle change prop for doing so, if you remember at the beginning of the course, I told you that you can use that simple hover over things. So we are going to pass this handle change, okay, to this unchange, okay? So let's just hover over this unchange. And as you can see that unchange here, we are seeing some stuff over here. First of all, we have this react.inputHTML attributes. Basically, this react.inputHTML attributes it refers to the input itself in here okay and after that we have let me just give it back again okay here we have the unchange with this question mark this question mark means that the unchange attribute which is attached to the input okay in here is optional it can be either undefined you know we're not if you don't pass anything to this unchanged it will be undefined or if you want to pass something to it it needs to be something of react dot change event handler of this type so this is exactly the type that we need to give to this handle change in here so let me just copy paste it simply instead of this any like this so yeah that's simple by using the uh, vs code help we simply found out this long and weirdly looking type that we have in here if you want to make this even shorter you can just get rid of this react from here and instead i don't need these prop types anymore we can save it like this we can simply import it i say import change event handler and it is now shorter okay so let's get back to the list we have changed it we have also converted these prop types and also we have defined the change handler type let's just get rid of it the last thing is that to add a new prop to the class info so i close this and get back to the class info in here and i'm going to add a new prop i'm going to call it the course okay and simply here i need to say the course is going to be another string and here is where I am going to consume it. I'm going to say course. Getting back in here, you see we have some angry TypeScript says, hey, you are expecting to receive another prop which is called the course. Okay, I'm going to pass it like this and we should be go to go. Okay, so now I want to make it optional. This is why I told you to add this new prop in here. What about I want to make this with a default value for doing that you can simply say here for example let's give it default value of um you know 
same as this one in here okay so this is a default value if you don't pass anything to this course as a prop okay it's going to have this default value for example let's remove it from here i want to show you something oops we get an error it says hey i still expecting a another prop which is called course where is that thing oh so we need to make this course to be optional for doing so it's very simple you can add an okay no sorry not here this is not the place for making a prop optional you need to do that question mark if you remember from the other file in settings and the unchange you need to get back to the uh the types where you define the types of that prop which is in here we say simply question mark after the course if you get back in here now the error is gone and we have an optional prop with a default value in here like this welcome back everybody so in this video we are going to start with a practice i have an exercise for you so first of all here you can find this code as the boilerplate the starter of this session attached to this lecture we have a very simple uh, app.tsx file in here which is calling another component the component is very simple as you can see it is named card it receives these children as props and in here we have this react component receiving several props you know the children here we have a string we have a paragraph and also we have more than one other react component which is of the same type receiving as the children in here what you should notice about this children prop is that it can be a string a primitive like string or a number and also it can be another react component as you can see in the app.tsx and also it can receive more than one child plus it can be another HTML element, such as this paragraph, the P in here. What is the practice? Well, the practice for you is that I wanted to get rid of this any keyword in here. I wanted to figure out a specific type that we can use it to specify that this prop, this children, can receive another React component as a prop, including another primitive like string, number, or even another HTML tag, plus another react component how can we do that what should we place instead of this any all right you can pause the video for a few seconds think about it and get back to me so we find out about the solution or solutions for this practice okay welcome back so let's see what can we place the first thing that we may have is that saying jsx dot an element hmm well this can work and perhaps if you take a look at the app.tsx there is something mad typescript is yelling at us it says well the jsx tags children prop expects a single child so the problem with this jsx that element is that it only accepts a single child okay we cannot give it an array of children and stuff like that so this is not going to be the solution how to fix it well maybe you can go with this by saying jsx dot element and give it an array and now well you can see another problem i believe well things are still red what is that oh so this is now accepting more than one child using this type that we define in here but the problem is that it does not allow primitives such as the string that we have in here hmm so this is going to be removed from the list of solutions the other thing that you may want to consider is the react oh, react dot react child which is deprecated for now and you can give it like this perhaps although it's just deprecated i just wanted to show you for a second in here the problem with this approach is that it does not allow a single react component or a single child to be received so again this is not the case so which one is the winner well this is the winner you can say react dot react node yes that's it or simple you can just do it like this to keep it cleaner and import it from react on the top in here so react node is the hero for us it's going to allow us to include or receive multiple children as the props also it is going to allow us to receive primitives like strings and numbers 
Beside this one, there is also a built-in utility that we can use whenever we want to tell TypeScript that this component is going to receive children's along with the props. And that's it using, let me just get rid of this from here. And this one, it's basically saying props with children. That simple. This means this is telling uh, TypeScript that this component is going to receive props along with children. Now a question arises here. It says whatever if we want to extend this and we want to include some uh, other props like for example let's say that we want to have uh, some kind of you know styling or things. Like if you go to the browser in here, you will see that this is the style that we have. Perhaps you want to change the color. For example, you want to say in here, I have style and inside of it, I want to say the color is, let's say red, for example, you know, let's just check it's working. Yeah, red. I want to receive a prop named or called color so that I can dynamically change the color of the text inside this section here. How to do that? So let's say, for example, you want to say it like this color. And you want to give it a default value of, let's say, mm, blue, for example. All right. Now it is yelling at us. It says, hey, I'm not sure with this. Declare it for me. This is where you need to step in. Okay. TypeScript is confused. Doesn't know what color is. So for including this or extending this props with children, here's what you're going to do. First, you need to create a type for your card. So we're going to say type and name it as the standard again. First, the name of the component is card. And then we say props. Okay, and then inside of it, I'm going to say I am going to receive a prop called color and its value. Also, it is going to be optional. Perhaps you don't want to send a color to your card. Okay, so give this question mark like this. And we have mentioned it in a previous lecture. And the values of the color can be like, let's say, uh, crimson, I believe it's a color in HTML, or it can be, uh, let's say, green perhaps and also the other color we can go with brown okay and now the uh, other thing you need to do is that with props with children you simply need to extend it like this you need to introduce the card props to the props with children inside these code braces in here saying card props like that and of course it's yelling at us because it says hey you have given this color a a, va a default value which is not one of the default or I believe the types that color can include so to fix this you can change it to crimson or instead of this green you can say blue like this okay so now we can simply remove this color from here and instead of hard coding it we are going to say the color to be the color no because we have the same, we just can keep it like this and we should be good to go. So the default is blue, it's going to be blue, I believe. Yeah, it's working, fine, fine. So as a recap, this is how you receive or how you declare the type of a prop, which can be another React component, or it can be in other words, children, okay? So using this props with children or the React dot React node, as we mentioned, but if you want to have some other uh, props other than the children you maybe prefer to go with props with children this is how I do it in the project it's just a common practice actually and by defining the types of your uh, components such as the card props in here you can include whatever other primitives and non primitives uh, props inside of it and simply extend the props with children using that type and you will be good to go so in the previous video, we said that if you want to receive children as props, you can go with these props with children as the type of your props and it's going to take care of that. And we also mentioned that if you want to expand it and add other props, this is how you can do it by simply saying, for example, type button props, for example, and then you can specify uh, an object like this, for example, here I have a button for every button we have the on click correct it needs to be uh, a kind of function so what is the type that we want to receive in here let's say it is also called the on click we need to define the type of the on click and expand it to the props with children and this on click is going to be consumed on this button element in here for that it's 
very very simple you can simply say the unclick or just copy paste it from here okay this is going to be a function which return void something like this okay and in here i'm just going to say on click once again and of course you need to extend it like this by saying the button props or by simply moving this from here i'm just going to show you something a little bit easier in here and let's just open this and close it like this and in here instead of this whole mess we are going just to mention the button props like this okay this is just a cleaner way of doing things so basically now uh, everything we have learned it uh, so far nothing new we just expanded the props with children but there is one thing it says that for example for this case in here the whole thing that we are returning is a button correct and for every button uh, for example button can be any other html element we have some set of predictable props like the unclick like the type of the button and stuff like that uh, is there a way that we can perhaps tell typescript about it instead of writing everything for example i'm going to have a type for my button and so i have to do it again in here say type blah 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 go in here and extend it that's going to be very very more you know the list is going to go on and on so long story short yes we have an option instead of another utility helper to be more specific we can use it instead of these props with children so instead of doing it like this you can say component component props let me just paste it in here yeah what's wrong with my vs code anyway let's just paste it in here and now it is called component props without ref you should be able to import it from react using your vs code and simply and after that whatever element that you have for example here we have a button can go ahead and say i want everything from the button it means if you put this props button props in here you are telling typescript that for this component we are accept, uh, expecting to receive or app optionally every single prop or you know the feature that we need for this button where like this because it, okay if you have another anything else you can just put the name in here but here we have a button okay that's how we do it. if you have a select for example you can just go ahead and do this like but let's just give it the button here so basically now i don't need to uh mention any of this in here like the other example that we had in that object and i can simply say unclick type and let me just write it in here i say type like this and as you can see typescript is not yelling at me it doesn't say hey what is this type nowhere you told me about it why because in here we told it that hey everything i'm going to receive in here after the children of course i am going to receive the features or the props related to the button and it checks the button says mm, you need an unclick you will need a type blah 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 and things like that and everything will be happy so using this feature now the button component has all the props same as the native button okay whatever this receives as a props now this button component that we have is going to have those props thanks to the component props without ref using these kind of settings hello everybody welcome back so in this video we want to talk about the user state and see if we have any challenges or basically how can we set the default types of user state or any kind of types that we may face during the user state inside typescript that's simple so here we have uh, this app.tsx very simple we have this shopping cart component in this shopping cart if i want to show you in the browser in here you can simply increase reset decrease and stuff like that we have this functionality but yet we don't have the functionality for these two things i will give that as an exercise to you so let's walk through that in the shopping cart we have first of all a very simple state that says items okay it starts with a default value of zero okay and then we have some kind of uh, very very basic jsx stuff in here like uh, the uh, h1 in here as you can see we have a few buttons for the increase decrease and each of them as you can see we have the on clicks which call the set items it removes it 
decrease it by one or set it to zero for the reset button and for the increase of course it says set items in here with plus one uh, the thing in here that says well we have a tsx file this is supposed to be a typescript code right does it look like typescript well in the first look you may say mm, no that's javascript but seriously people take it easy this is typescript why because i told you typescript is smart enough right now it can discover what kind of types we have in here what do i mean for example you just need to hover over these items in here and as you can see typescript itself detected it as a number it said that this is going to be a number well based on the initial state that we gave it in here and also if you hover over this set items it also says that this is a dispatch blah 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 it's just a function that receives a number okay so we didn't need to step in and tell typescript that this set items is a function that receives a number and don't be confused by this set actions blah 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 things like that because uh, set state and user state is basically a wrapping and abstraction over the uh, user reducer okay so that's it so as you can see in here we didn't have to define any types and typescript was smart enough to figure out things for us but i have an exercise for you right now we can in here increase reset and decrease the value of the shopping cart the practice i have for you down in here we have a small beautiful form like this okay here we have the unsubmit and also we have this input okay i want you to do something for me first of all i want you to update the value of the card whenever we enter a value in here by hitting this update counter you can see it in here this button okay so you need uh, some kind of unchange for this one for this input so when you type something perhaps you need to add another state in here just to keep a record of the value inside this input and perhaps you want to uh, create a submit you know in here whenever you submit you hit this button something needs to happen here so the value of the items will be updated based on the value of that let's call it input items that you can create okay pause the video for a few seconds and whenever you figure it out just see if you face any challenges and get back to me and we do it together welcome back so let's see how to fix those exercises first of all we need to create a state to keep the value of this input in here let's just do it like this saying const let's call it the input items you know because after all there are the items but coming from the input something like that's just a naming convention in here so input items and set input items okay and also it's going to be used state and as the initial state you can simply give it items if you like or you can give it zero whatever you like so if you hover over this input item once again it's again saying it's a number and this is of course a function receiving a number okay now whenever we type something we wanted to update the value of this input item for doing that simply in this input i come down in here First of all, let's change the value of this input by saying that it needs to be the input items. Oh, it needs to be with S. Yeah, now it makes sense. And for the on change, I am going to simply say A and set input items. And inside of this, okay, if you give it a string, Tops is gonna yell at you and says, hey, this set input items was going to receive a number but now you are giving it a string let's just remove it and see if we face anything further let me just do it like this and for the on change i'm going to say e dot target dot value and boom, we have another error why because after all the value even if you type it is finally a string if you want to change it you can simply give it a plus or parse integer or you can say number like this and keep it inside of it so we're going to give it like this all right so now if you change everything one more thing we need to do in here is that for this submit for this submit if you want to fix it let me get back in here before we continue to that let's just check this and verify that it's working okay if you get back in here well you can type anything 
number but as you can see when you hit this you cannot clean it okay you cannot make this an empty string why is that it's because this number this conversion that we are doing in here it doesn't accept an empty it doesn't understand empty string it even if you give it an empty string it will convert it to zero so this number function is always going to return a number if you give it an empty string it gives you a zero so how to fix this there is a very easy solution and another solution using the TypeScript for the TypeScript part you can do it like this first of all this is a number right this is going to receive a number how to fix it we want to get rid of this number we don't need to use it right so we need to specify the types ourselves we need to step in here and for example tell this that hey you are going to receive a number and for this because in here the e.target.value okay can be a string we want to tell this that you are basically going to receive either a string or a number and maybe you want to go with zero at the beginning doesn't matter okay like this so what happened here by doing this by defining the type of the user state as a string or number down in here in the inputs if you remove this number from here this number function this conversion you see that typescript is not going to yell at you why because you tell it that this set input items is going to receive either a string which is this case or a number okay so if you get back to the browser if you clean this zero oh now we can simply get rid of it but be careful for updating the uh as you can see here we have this update thing whenever you want to submit the form let's add another thing to it for this part okay whenever you hit the update we want to add the current value of the input items to the items themselves i mean take this and give it to this so you update this one that's simple for doing that i am going to say uh set items and now in here as you can see it takes only a number so i want to pass the input items input items but there's a problem see in here it says the input items is either a string or a number and this set items only receives number where because here we defined it in here we said it only receives number how to fix that here we can safely convert this into a number by saying for example number and set inputs and now the error is gone if you get back in here we also can have an empty string plus we can say like 45 and if you hit update counter it's 45 if you increase it decrease it it's not changing let's see what's going on so we did not use the use effect yet one more thing we can do just to complete the example of this session is that whenever you change these item cards using the increase or decrease or reset we wanted to update this and this is basically as you can guess is a simple use effect so we can say use effect and we are going to listen to the items okay so whenever the items change i want to simply say set input items i want to update the input items using the set input items with the value which can be a string or a number and i'm going to pass the items if you save this or of course you can make it a single line you know if you like to keep things you know clean and so just keep it like the other way just to confuse you for here let me just validate it first oops I had an error just do a refresh and if you increase it yes it is being updated reset fine now i want to show you a very easy it's kind of a trick you know if you don't want to use all these types in here let me show you a small lovely trick let me just get it to the items like the very beginning of the uh session in here and let's assume that we are going to in fact we don't need this because it's a number also let me see if it works and now we are back in the zero point it says hey you are giving it a string it needs a number simply can change it there is a built-in function or built-in feature in here that says value as a number click on that 
get back in here and as you can see you can even get rid of it see increase decrease and let me just see the number 46 update yeah okay so that was a very small trick i don't know whether you know about it or not but you can say value as number which means converting the value as a string to a number hello everybody and welcome back so before we deep dive into the context of this session let me explain some stuff for you first of all we have this book uh, project example or example of project whatever you call it we have some uh, components same as usual we have these books we have this books uh, .tsx for displaying a list of books nothing too fancy just you know things like that you can have some even better components yourself right this is just for demonstration and also we have this book .tsx for displaying a single book which is the title and the author stuff like that and along with the css you can check them for yourself plus we have this loader you know it's a small loading text which has some kind of animation before we load the data from the server it is going to display oh we said server what is server don't be afraid okay i know you are perhaps mostly a front-end developer and you don't want to mess with the back end so simply i have included two files for you in here first of all in the root directory this is the books.json if you click on it we have dummy a 20 a list of 20 books they are very very dummy actually you know for the book 16 author 16 and etc like this we are going to consume this in another file called server.js this is a very basic and simple express um a, a node.js backend using the express web server library in here so it's going to run on port 4000 and also for installing it you need to do the mpmi if you are using the boilerplate of this session so you install the express.js plus you need to, to have the node.js installed on your machine so that you can run this server it has very simple roots like this api.books which returns a list of books also it can get limit offset and you can go through that we have some post get post get and even patch and delete stuff and finally it's going to run it this okay so very simple you can go ahead and walk through it and check it for yourself if you want to follow along with me please whenever i use this book project example try to make sure that in your terminal okay like in here let me just clear it for you i want you to uh do this not and make sure that you are in the root directory where the server.js file is included and then you say server.js hit enter and oops we got an error i believe we need to do the npmi because uh yeah i need to install the express.js and include them so let me do that for you just so i can practice together so the code let me paste it in here you say npm install or npm i simply express and of course with this small library that we have in here you need to do worry about it hit enter and wait for it till it is being installed on the machine then you can run the server simply by saying not server.js and yes we are good to go now the server is running on localhost 4000 plus uh, before we proceed with that you know this is a kind of course problem always you need to fix it whenever you are using the local host for calling a backend server you need to say here proxy and inside of it you say http local host followed by the port of your backend server which is 4000 okay you don't need to worry about this is just some settings i want to show you and you have it in here so i hope that we're not going to have any errors in case we are going to fix it together so now we are ready to do requests to our server i just explained it to you in here getting back to the app.tsx we have this uh, kind of type for the book we have included in here it has an id a title and of course the author we said that it is going to be optional and we have just these two functions in here for fetching a random book and fetching fetching a specific uh, book list with a limit which is the count in here as you can see plus down in here we have the actual component which starts with the real thing now we get to the context of this session 
here we have this state which says book set book and use state and at the very beginning of the render of this component we are having this use effect which fires by calling this fetch random book it just fetches a random book as the name indicates and then it says set book but we have a problem in here if you hover over this book in here you see that typescript said that book is undefined and that's completely true and natural because we didn't pass any initial state in it whenever you do fetch calls or any kind of request to a backend server another machine okay there is a delay okay a few milliseconds and so on so forth before you get or you fetch or you receive the actual data but before that we usually do a kind of check like this we say hey before i have a book if it's null or undefined i wanted to show this loader correct but because we are using typescript for a purpose here and that is for this user state we cannot let it to be undefined for solving it perhaps the first thing that maybe comes to your mind is that we can put an object like this and say hey so we are going to have a title Let's give it an empty string. You can see there's lots of legacy code actually like this. And also we have an author, which we give it an empty string. So whenever the fetch is done, the actual data is going to be placed in here. But before that, we are going to have this initial state value. But this is actually uh, problematic. Why? Because number one, this is not going to be the case. It's not going to fire anymore because actually book has something inside of it so you gotta do some you know nested you know more unclear solution to fix this logic plus we have an optional entity in here which is the author okay and using this approach typescript is not aware about it and even if you like it it's going to uh, you know got some other problems if you hover over book right now in here you see that typescript has detected that this book type is something like this it says the title is a string and the author as also string so you can get some idea from this that for solving the problem as you know following the standard approaches you know the right way is simply by giving it a type in here so instead of this empty values we can tell it that we are going to expect for this use state either a book type you know as you can see from here or we are going to expect the undefined oops sorry i just made a mistake in here this is not supposed to be in here it needs to be between these two braces okay so now completely we are following the standards of typescript whatever is going to be actually uh, fetched finally is going to be accepted by this set book because it's going to be a type of book or before that it will be it will be undefined and this will help us to have this kind of logic you know showing a loader before the actual data is being fetched okay so that was just another example of the uh, user state and kind of challenges that you may face specifically in this case where you want to, you don't know what exactly to place as an initial state if you don't have it all right in the next video i believe we're going to have some kind of more exercises for you hello dear students welcome back so in this video we want to have another exercise we started with that and then we're going to see the solution but before that as you can see in here if i want to uncomment this piece of code okay and refresh the application it's going to fetch a random book and display it in this book component so let's get back and verify yes refresh and every time there is a book fetched and displayed in here so my challenge for you is that let me just get rid of this from here you can use it later on I want you to use this books component which is in here and it receives several props and for now it is any okay fine so inside of it we are going to display a list of books because we are not fetching anything we are not going to need this let me just do a cleanup in here also because uh, in the form let me just comment this and show you what we have at the beginning okay let's refresh yes we have this very small form for example you want to fetch 10 books you hit load books and it's going to show you a list of those books that's the idea 
okay so because we have a button of course we're not going to use this use effect it's uh not needed anymore and what else yes this random also is extra and so good so all right so the challenge for you is that i want you to go ahead and fetch the books from here let me just fix this in here so we're going to fetch some books all right and also our state will be books and set books and also this is not the case anymore let me just get rid of it it's going to be an array okay so when you hit the button it's going to load in fact in here when you hit this it's going to call this function okay that you pass it for it inside of it like this in here this is part of practice and it sets the books and after that you do a kind of looping in here you say for example books dot map and inside of it it's going to give you let's say a book like this and you are going to return another book Ooh, with <laughs> what's going on yo okay so and here of course for the book you need to give it some you know the title and of course the other properties so we're gonna say the title is good very simple I'm passing the title and the author as you know they are needed in this book in here is the title and the author that's why I'm passing them but TypeScript starts yelling at me and says hey I don't know what the type is of this book so I'm not sure whether it contains this title and author would you please help me with that well yes it's very simple actually you need to specify the type for this user states and we've done that already it's very simple first of all we know it is an array okay so what array of what exactly array of this book type so you simply say book type that's it so now it's done the real business you need to do as in practice okay is that you need to figure out first how to send a count number because in here as you can see you can fetch with a limit okay it receives a count and you need to pass it along with a unsubmit and also an unchange and uh, of course take care of the children props type okay because right now everything is in type of any you know this unchanged is any this count is also any and that's not how things work in fact your mission is to pass these things the unsubmit unchanged count and of course before that you need to specify their type in this books.tsx uh, file okay so i'm going to stop the video in here and see you in the next one and doing the solution together all right welcome back so let's do the practice that i told you in the previous video the first thing is that we need the count in here as you can see how many books to fetch for that we need to add another state we are going to call it the uh, count and set count and of course it's going to be used state because the initial value we give it for example 10 or 5 or whatever number you like the count is going to be of type number and simply we can pass it like this we say count equals count okay so now count is passed correctly and now we need to pass the unchange in here so whenever we type something in this input okay it's going to uh update the count state in here for that it's very simple again in this books we are going to say unchanged it's going to be a kind of state like this it receives the e and it says set count because count is a number okay you simply need to say e dot target dot target yes that value okay you can give it this plus like this okay or you can simply say value what's going on with my screen in here let me just check it yeah or simply you can say uh value as number and this is getting this error in a type screen yelling at me because of i haven't yet fixed the types in this books.tsx okay so let's get back in here instead of this any i'm going to create a simple type in here saying type books props equals first of all i have this count okay it's going to be a number then i have on submit we'll need to do some couple of imports i say 
form it's going to be a form event handler let me just paste it okay so this is basically things you know you don't need to memorize that actually it's all in the documentations and everywhere and we need to import this from react so i say import this piece of thing from react and we simply need to get this and put it inside of this also for the on change we need to do a similar thing with the slight difference and also on change is going to be i believe optional and this one also to be imported okay so now the on change and on submit and counts are fixed in here let's use this type okay so the first thing you may want to do it is something like this you say books props but very soon it yells at you and says hey what is children yeah, oh, forgot about this. Oh, for doing that, it's very simple. We've done that already. We say uh, props with, oh, let me just copy paste again. My VS code goes crazy sometimes. I need to do it manually. I just going to import it in here. Props with children. And I'm going to say props with children. And inside of it in here, I'm going to say book props. Save it and okay so what do we have in here also i'm going to say on change first of all let's get back in here and says on submit okay i will give you the on submit because it's not optional in here let's do some couple of fixes the on change is wrong in here it needs to be on so i don't know why i've done that actually so it's fixing here whenever we submit the form this unsubmit is being called but we need to define the up submit also in here so let's go for that i am going to continue the way in here i'm going to say on submit on submit equals okay so it's going to be a function like that which calls the um, fetch books okay and we need to give it the count so it knows how many books to fetch for us and then i say uh, actually then it needs to say set books so whenever it fetch them it sets them all in the set books okay i think we should be good to go now to verify that let's go to the browser uh zero okay let's give it okay i want three books Yo, we have the three books. Fine, I'm okay. Let's say 10 books. And it's doing it. And if you refresh, hmm. Okay. So this is how, as a recap, this is how we pass the events and states in a TypeScript React application. I know there can be numerous ways of doing things. For example, this count maybe shouldn't be in here you know shouldn't handled in here it should be inside the books.tsx because whatever the count changes this parent component this app component is going to re-render and that means low performance but this is not about performance this course and we are talking about specifically the typescript so this is just you know mentioning things in here and as the practice was meant to show you how to pass these states and the event handlers and how to uh, more specify the types of them and also uh, define them for your corresponding hey everybody welcome back so if you remember in the previous video i told you that using this approach in here for fetching the data and passing the count like this can have an uh, you know one of the issue with it is that it has performance issue whenever the count in here updates the whole app component the parent component is going to re-render and all the child components are going to re-render as a result of that so in case you want to fix it i just decided to do that in this video and see how things work you know we're going to see some challenges maybe you can learn some stuff from that so the idea is here that we are not going to longer need this count in here so we're going to remove it from this and it's gonna yell at us as hey it needs a count this you know a, a prop called count is required so where's that so uh, i'm just telling you we are messing with the code in here and i am not 
really sure when these red yellings are going to stop but we're gonna do our best so we're not even need these uh, unsubmit not even the unchange the only thing we are going to pass with books is actually the set books itself so we're gonna say set books equals something like this let's just keep it like this for now getting back to the books in here books.tsx we need to move the count in here okay so i'm going to say const i'm going to have count how many books you want to retrieve and set count to be use state oops use state and we're going to give it the 10 value in here and as you can see there's a conflict so we said we're not going to need this and also not this and the only thing we are passing in here is this set book in here okay what else we need to clean up in here as we said we're not gonna need these as props so let's get rid of them we, we only have these set books in here okay but what is the signature what type should we specify for these set books do you remember i told you to stay dynamic okay go and use the vs code and slint thing to see and seek any help getting back to the app component in here if you hover over this set book as you can see this is the signature of it i know it's a long blah 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 thing in here as we said it's a wrapper of user doer and things like that there is absolutely no issue it's completely fine very well that you can uh, grab this from here copy it get back in here and paste it as the signature of this okay and of course we can import this book i think it's exported from here yes so let's import this book type okay and as you can see now we have the signature of this uh, set book up and set like this so let's see what errors do we have so for the unsubmit we don't need it like this as you remember we have it in here like the fetch books okay so let's import it from the app component and it needs the count and here we have the count as a state so we just pass it to that and we say then please call this set books function what else do we have sounds like we have some kind of yellings from typescript yes on the unchange in here so whenever the input changes okay we want to update the count for that we are going to say Whatever you change, I want you to do something like this. You say E, and then we say set count. And inside of it, because the count only takes a number, okay, we are going to say E dot target dot. And if you remember, instead of saying number and then wrapping the E dot target dot value with plus or a number, we say value as number. Yay okay so let's fix everything back in this app yep we just need to give it the set books let's see what do we have in here it says count is missing hmm where is count it shouldn't be in there let's get back oh yeah it's in here we just need to get rid of this save it and yeah thanks already let's go to the browser and verify that everything's working as expected so let's say five books yay okay so congratulations it's working with the refactored version that we just did so basically what we did in this lesson is that i showed you that the other way we talked about in case you want to do it but the perfect way perhaps is still the first way you can go with that in you know, no issues with that one the other lesson that we learned i want to emphasize is also that as you remember in here when we were typing the signature of this function in here set books we did not need to do a lot of research or you know recall something from our own memories to get this piece of signature we did a kind of reverse engineering you know we went looking for the set books originally in here and we just hover over it and 
we got this you know whatever in your in your project you have the variables or you have the elements defined you can just simply refer to them and try to do some kind of reverse engineering and find out about the types all right that can help you a lot in writing or finding the um, proper signatures for defining the types of different things in your code base so one more lesson we saw how helpful can be typescript imagine that you run um, your codes in pure javascript okay and an error occurs for fixing that you have to navigate between your browser and your editor and the console log and stuff like that just to figure out a simple bug the source of the error but right now with the typescript you have everything in place in the editor okay it tells you it gives you hints about what is going on what is wrong and you simply can debug the codes that's why uh, you know it's a great idea to use TypeScript and even to start every single code base you have initially with TypeScript you need to get used to that you can save your life hello everybody welcome back so in this lecture we're going to talk about the user doucher and in this section overall but we're going to start off with another actually a previous example that we have an example project which was the shopping cart if you remember that so basically i have just implemented a super simple user doucher that if you have just worked with the you know redux and stuff like that you would have seen some more complicated versions of this what i've done in here so basically in this shopping cart.tsx if you see in here i have included the codes as usual in the lecture it's a uh, it's called the cart reducer a very simple using the switch case in here we have some action types blah 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 stuff like that the very I i'm sure that because this is an advanced it's supposed to be advanced course um I'm, I'm sure that you know what i'm doing in here okay you're familiar with it user reducer and things like that but the point of this video is that when I was implementing this as you can look if you take a look at this in the beginning this is just JavaScript okay it's not you know the only TypeScript thing about it is that we have this kind of TSX and a little bit of some types in here but at the beginning of this uh, reducer this cart reducer if you look at it is completely uh, JavaScript so when typing this in the first place when I was trying to write it I faced some issues one of the issues was like you know misspelling the action types in here you know I had to go to the browser and do the console.log just to check where I did misspell uh, anything okay so that was very a kind of annoying uh, process to do plus uh, if you scroll down in here you will see that I have made a mistake you know if you get over to the browser okay if you try to you know now it maybe works let me just get back what was that you know we have some dispatches as you can see instead of the use state because we i just changed that example i made it using the user doucher so now i was making a mistake like this you know instead of typing the type i i just added an s in here it says types if you get back to the browser you see that nothing works you know it's just freezing not updating that much and things like that so if you are not using typescript this is can be a very tricky part to locate the source of this bug and it's very simple this extra s in here if we were using typescript it would yell at us and it says hey what is types i don't know what types is and you say okay that was a typo so this is one kind of issue and the other issue as i mentioned was with uh, these action names plus there's one more thing if you come down in here i have a very simple user reducer you know the dispatch thing in here and the, the structuring that we did in here to get the values i have these items okay it's supposed to be the items of the card it's uh, if you hover over it it is going to be a number hmm well that's correct but if you hover over these input items interesting as you can see it is any but the type of it as we have told the typescript somehow in here that the um input items is supposed to be string and number but why is that exactly why does it show it in here any hmm if you go inside the use uh, the cart reducer inside of it in here the value of the input items is being accessed is being updated using this action and if you hover over this action it is any so TypeScript, you know, is not that much smart in here and it uh, decides that, well, the input items is also any. So 
that is another problem that in this video we're going to see how we can tackle these issues using the TypeScript. So just as a review, you see in here that we have an initial state. In fact, like this initial state, we tell it that items and input items. And plus, we have uh, this is actually the type of the initial state and the actual initial state, which is 0, 0 for both items and the input items in here. As you can guess, one of the main issues that we have mentioned is that the TypeScript figured out that the input items is any. And we said that it's due to the action because the input items is being as a payload from the action. Here, if you take a look, you know, it doesn't need super smart brain to figure it out because here the action is any. And this is where we are actually beaten from. So if action is not any, then what is it supposed to be? If you have worked with Redux already, you know that it says that every action, uh, actually action, is an object that at least has a type, something like this. You can say const um, action is an object and the type can be, let's say, you know, for example, increase or whatever else. And that's it. But if you give it anything other than, you know, for example, increase or stuff like that, it's not going to let yell at you. You know, Redux doesn't care about the actually the actual signature or the type of it as is seen here. In simple words, here we have a string, but Redux and the use reducer, in fact, will let you allow you to dispatch a number, surprisingly. So just for uh, illustration purposes, let me just instead of this any, OK, I'm going to give it a type in here. I say so the action is a going to have to have a type which is going to be a string, let's say, and a payload which is going to be, let's say, number. <laughs> this is just a dummy code in here. If you go down in here, now let's see what the input items is. If you hover over it, OK, now it's a string and number. Very well. So we got to deal with the type of this action, OK? We need to create a proper signature. This is just a dummy thing in here. We need to create a proper signature for this action based on the reducer that is going to be uh, dispatched for. Oh, you see lots of yelling from TypeScript. Let's just give it to any in here for a second. Dipping into this action signature, first of all, let's look at our simple reducer. It has the increase, the decrease, the reset, the update input items, and the update items from input. We have these action types, okay? All of them, but this one do not need any payload okay so if it is increase decrease reset or this one okay they are just action types but uh, you know this requires a payload so you know instead of typing these every time how about we create a type based on that first of all for the type of the action let's see if we face any challenges for that so the very very basic thing that may come to your mind is creating a type in here and let's call it the action and inside of it, we can tell you that the type value can be first increment or the increase or it can be this decrease or perhaps it can be the reset and also we have this update okay a little bit boring here but anyway copy pasting not bad and like this did you notice a problem yes this one requires the payload it needs a payload so we're gonna eliminate it for now and see what can we do about it for in a second and for the other action type which requires a uh, payload let me just grab it from here and i'm going to create a second action type specifically for that saying type and let's call it action with payload and the type can be this. Of course, beside that, we also have a payload and a payload because, you know, the shopping cart thing is going to be a number. All right, nothing too fancy and too complicated here. We just created an action for those action types without payload, as you can see in here. And we created another type for the actions with payload, which is only a single action type in here. And we specified the signature for the payload of it. So let's see how can we use these instead of this any in here. So 
we will have the, a nice and beautiful signature or type for our action. It can be as simple as saying that action can be either of type action or action with payload. So maybe someone said, hey, why is this useful exactly? Let me show you something. Let's say that in this, uh, you know, let's just get rid of this for now. Comment it out in here. I know lots of yelling in here. Just for demonstration purposes to see how TypeScript can save our lives. Let's imagine that we want to write our reducer using if statements, right? Let's say if, and I'm going to say action that type equals as soon as you type these quotations, oh, see, we have it in here in all the types possible that can be accepted for the action type in a drop down list. You don't need, you need to type them. You know, this is a very long name. And in big code bases, definitely they can cause the least thing they can cause is a typo and misspelling. And guess what? Let me just choose this and uh you know some dummy stuff in here if you want to write another one another if for another action type you say action that type equals check this if you type the quotations and now okay i see okay because we did not uh, specify anything in here i believe let me just get rid of this for now okay let me see let me give it a body so it accepts it as something from us i'm going to say constant to be in here and of course it's going to return something for us i'm going to grab this and put it in here and like that if you say it like this yes now the decrease as you can see is not in the least and the more you type or you, you you write the cases for your action type it will shorten the list for you and that can be really helpful you know what in big code bases that's how typescript can save your life and trust me it's a great uh save that you can get so let me just uncomment everything and yes now our action is of type action and action with payload and if you hover over items yes it's number if you hover over the input items it's either a string or a number as expected and as a more checking to see how exactly uh, TypeScript can help us in here in the user reducer stuff if you try to for example do a dispatch okay in uh, for the dispatch you are going to give it a, a type the type of the action let's say okay for example I want to use this okay in here Okay, it's fine, no problem. But if you try to give it a payload in here, you say, hey, the payload, come on, payload is going to be three. It's going to yell at you. Okay, TypeScript says, hey, you know what? This type does not have any payload, okay? Based on the action and the action with payload that you provided earlier. That's nice. And guess what? If you try to um, use the other or the only action type that requires payload, in here it's also going to yell at you and says hey you know what this action type requires a payload and you need to assign it to it nice right okay well and if you wonder about the math behind the scenes it's very simple whenever let me just control z whatever you give it an action type it's going to go to the uh, action and action with payload the signatures you provided for this one it checks which action type you provided if it's in this case then it checks oh there is no payload and it gonna yell at you if you give it a payload and if it's inside of here it will expect a payload with a number type if you don't provide that or you provided a different payload with a string for example it's again going to do the math and start yelling at you if you do anything wrong And as you can see, we're still having a yelling, you know, something red from TypeScript. If you click on that, let's see, let's hover over that on the dispatch. You know, this is the unchange, if you remember, on the input, whenever you type something in here, as you can see, okay, now we have an error. If you type something, it's going to dispatch with this update input items, you know, the value of the input, but we have an error, okay? This is the action type that requires a payload, and we are giving it a payload, but can you guess what is the problem? Hover over it. Yes, it says type string is not assignable to type number. It's expecting a number payload, as you can uh, recall from here. For this action type, it requires a payload, and that must be a number. So let's get back in here, and you can simply say 
value as number. And that will be fixing the problem. You can simply verify that by going to the browser and let's type something. One, two, three, update the cart. Yes, increase, decrease, resets. Everything's fine and working. So as a recap, the whole code base which is the shopping cart is uh you know something from the past we have worked on that already in another lecture but we have created a very simple cart reducer which i believe you are familiar with if you have any questions regarding this please don't hesitate to reach me in the qa section but it's very very simple using a switch case for different action types and we had a problem with the action because its signature was any and then we learned how to define a type for the action for uh, those action types without payloads and with a payload and after that we learned how it can save our lives on a large code base by you know checking the types for us and give us any errors related to mistakes we make hello everybody welcome back so in this video we have another context another topic to talk about when it comes to dealing with reducers and dispatching actions with TypeScript specifically we are going to see how can we um, pass a dispatch function as a prop for this purpose we are going to start working on a new demo project which is based for picking colors let's see how it looks like do not be afraid it's a very sim simple application nothing to fancy in here it has a color selector you can just choose a color so basically we have two actions are being dispatched whenever a color changes okay the hex code of that color needs to be fired as a dispatch action and also the rgb colors uh, numbers actually in fact in here so mainly if we're going to start with two action types plus the state that we have is this simple lovely form that we have in here whenever you create a color you can save it so that's the state we're going to deal with getting back to our application in the components we have several small components i'm not going to go through them because i just want to save you time instead of building everything from scratch because it's very simple here we have this common as you can see the common components a button color changer the thing that i did in here i'm not going to spend so much time is that i have included some simple comments in here in case you face any troubles also you have the qa section you get rich to me if uh, any questions any issues you find of when you explore these uh, files in here okay so i'm sure they're too smart you are advanced and you can understand these simple fairly components so let's start the thing is that let's imagine that uh, for this set colors in here which you can see it in this folder okay we want to pass the uh, dispatch you know we want to dispatch uh, this uh, pass a prop let's call it this batch something like this okay this is the whole idea we're going to start working on but right now we are using the user state in here so as you can see we need to start creating the user uh, the uh, actions first and then we're going to create the reducer for that let me create in these uh, components or in the src we can create a folder and we're going to call it reducer or oh, any other name any other directory you like and inside of it we're going to create a file let's uh call it what do we call it let's say color reducer not bad so color reducer reducer.ts so first we're going to start with two simple actions one for changing the uh, hex color and the other one for the rgb values so let's export that we're going to say export hey what is that export it's going to be a type let's call it change the uh or let's just keep it update you know update hex action and the types are going to have first of all the type of this action is going to be hmm, let's say update hex okay and of course we're going to have a payload which is going to be an uh, an object is going to have a key called hex color and it is going to be a string very well and then we're going to have another action type for the rgb and we're going to call it the update rgb action like that and the type is going to be let's say update 
uh, RGB. Super simple. I'm not going to worry about the mistyping in here because it's not going to bite me later on. And for the payload, I'm going to say I have an object of array and actually an object that says the RGB is going to be an array of number, number, a number. Oh, what's that? Well, this is simply an array of three numbers. Okay, you can maybe yeah, you have seen it in tuples and other stuff like that. So this is basically not an array of number. It's an array of three numbers. And if you wonder why I am giving it this array of three numbers, it's because the library that we are using in our files for managing the color values is <laughs> requiring us to give it a value of an array of three numbers. <laughs> That's it. Okay, so now we have our actions in place. Let's go for the state. For the state, it's very simple. It's just going to have a hex color, which in case is string. You know, whenever you update the color, uh, the state of that color is simply the hex value of that color. So let's just keep it for now simple as saying type color state is going to be uh, hex color is just going to be an object which contains a key called hex color and that is going to have a value of string and now let's go for the initial state okay so we're going to export it uh, we're going to say const uh, initial let's say init state is going to be well let's give it the type in here so the initial state can you guess the type of it yeah it's going to be the color state so i'm going to say color state and it's going to be first of all an object containing what a hex color so this is the benefit of writing the type right away so whenever you write it inside of here you simply it yells at you it says hey i am expecting the hex color property i say okay sir i'm gonna do that and if you give it a number like 34, it's going to yell at you. It says, hey, I am string. I'm actually string, not number. So let's see what color to give it. If you have a favorite, go ahead and do it. Unless I'm going to use this lovely hex color in here. Very well. Next, we have our actual reducer. For that, we're going to simply say const. We have this called the color reducer. And uh, it's going to receive first of all a state and the state is going to be of type color state very well and we're going to give it an initial state which is the init state and of course we have the action which can be the action is going to be of two possible types it can be either update hex action or the other one which is update rgb action very well so let me just say it here like that because we have to really two only action types i'm going to use if statement instead of uh the switch statements uh i'm going to say action the action the type equals because of the lovely type script if you type this okay we have these two suggestions we don't need to type them so i say if it's uh hex then i want to do first uh, destructuring because we have the payload in here the hex code from the payload i can simply say hex color hex oops hex color from the action dot payload and basically we're going to return everything in the state plus that hex color and for the other action type i'm just going to copy paste this in here and i'm going to say it's yelling at me type script very well nice it's because it needs to be rgb we have done the hex and also it says we don't have hex color in the payload here we have rgb so okay fine i'm going to grab the rgb in here but we need to return the hex color okay and uh, in fact we need to figure out a way to convert the rgb to hex code for that we're going to use a library it's very simple so let's get on the top in here like that you simply need to type rgb okay from color convert if you do that it will be imported automatically and down in here so i can do the conversion in here like saying 
uh, hmm, because we have the RGB name, same as the other one on the top imported. Let me just do it in a different way. Instead of this, I'm going to have, we have the const hex color equals the RGB, the RGB that we imported from the library dot hex. This is going to convert it for us. And for the feed, we are going to say action dot payload dot RGB. And simply, we can just destruct it like this in here. Okay, so simple, we have two action types. One is going to um, receive the hex and return it. And the other one is going to receive the RGB code of that color, convert it to hex and then return it using this action type. And as the default state, you know, we had all the uh, the action type states and the cases are being checked, but just to make sure we can finally say in here, return. And we're gonna say state like the default case in switch case. And before we start using this color reducer, of course, we need to export it from this file. All right, let's use it in the app.tsx in here. So instead of this line of state, we are going to use the use reducer. So let's say const uh, use reducer, reducer, what's going on here? I'm just importing from here. I'm going to say use reducer. Okay, nice. Sometimes things go wrong, whatever. And we are going to give first of all the reducer itself. Do you remember the name? It was color reducer. So let's just import it in here. Yes, import. And it needs an initial state. I think we have named it init state. Okay, cool. Of course, we get some yelling from TypeScript in here because we changed everything. The state is now a reducer. We're going to take care of all of them. So if you remember, the color reducer returns one thing all the time, a hex color. So let's bring that in here. I'm going to destruct it in here. I'm going to say hex color and of course the dispatch. So let's call it dispatch like this. So let's see what we have in here. We have this set. We're going to change it from here. We are going to say instead of this we say dispatch and of course we're going to give it the action type so we're going to say the type is going to be oops see here we have it we are going to update the hex value and of course we need to give it the uh, payload so for the payload we need to give it the key which is hex color and we're going to say e dot target dot let's say value and the error is just because we need to give it a payload keyword in here yeah okay so this has been a long video i'm not gonna <laughs> continue it. let's just stop it in here and in the next video we're going to continue the purpose of this lecture in fact but before that let's verify that our new unchange which uses the user reducer is working as expected let's refresh and click on that new color mm, yeah everything's working Hello everybody, welcome back. So in this video, we can actually pass down this dispatch to this set color. And what we do that, if we get back to the browser, as you can see now, we cannot change these values, the RGB stuff in here, okay? And that's because we don't have any action or dispatch function for them in a place. That's the agenda we're gonna do. So uh, we're gonna do the uh, passing on this set colors component. Let me just open for you the in case you want to do it yourself and as you can see in here we have some hex to rgb for example or uh, the other components so we're going to pass it first of all to this part from here and then we're going to if you open the one of these components in here this is we're going to be consuming some of them so basically let me just close that for now and get back to the app dot tsx and we're going to do something like this you say dispatch we are going to send a prop called dispatch and it's actually going to have the dispatch value something like this and if you wonder why we are drilling down this prop you know sending it to the set colors and then from the set colors to another prop well that's a kind of preparing the scene for using the context api okay so let's just do it this way and we're going to refactor it later on so let's go to the set colors and tell it that we are going to have another actually instead of this just this hex color we're going to expect another prop which is called this patch and its signature is going to be dispatch from react 
and of course it's going to ask us for what action and the action that I need is actually in the color reducer if you remember we had two possible signatures for that the update hex action and the update RGB action but I don't want to repeat myself every time I write this statement in here so let's just, just create it for once forever I'm going to say type and let's call it uh, da, 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 da. let's say color actions okay and they are going to be exactly equal to this value in here so instead of just repeating this statement I'm going to say color actions and of course we're going to export it so that we can use it in other files like this in here paste it import it and we're good to go so great that we have this in place we can go to this hex to rgb once again in here to complete the type signatures let's just copy paste something from here let's say i want this dispatch again for the two rgb file also to be received as a prop we need to import everything first from react dispatch where are you oh come on dispatch from react let me see get on the top and say import no nope. import dispatch from react okay so we have this patch oh we missed this edge in here anyway and for the action also we have the color actions and we just import that too so uh, we need to receive this dispatch as a prop so definitely we need to mention it in this place also in this uh, set colors we need to mention this dispatch define it in here and then we are going to pass it because you see that TypeScript is yelling at us says hey this is expecting a dispatch prop so I'm going to give it to that so I say dispatch is going to be the dispatch that we're receiving from the app.tsx and we can also now use it here so now that we have everything in place for this file let's just create a helper function so whenever they change these input values they're going to dispatch a uh, payload for updating the rgb color so let's say that i'm going to call this function let's say update rgb and it's going to receive three values the uh, red stands for r which is as you can see in here the rgb they are all number come from that library and the um green is going to be g and the uh blue is going to be b of course and we're gonna say that yeah that's mostly all the job in here so what we have is that we want to dispatch we are going to use this dispatch finally in here and uh, I'm just going to say that for the dispatch, I need to give it a type. And if you do this, oh, you see that we have these autocomplete or these suggestions to be more specific. If you don't get these kind of uh, suggestions from TypeScript, this is a signature or a sign actually of uh, there is something going wrong with your TypeScript wiring or defining types of that. This is why actually we are using TypeScript so that it helps us with uh, this kind of features uh, among our code base. So we are going to do the uh, update RGB because we're updating the RGB value in here and of course we are going to have a payload and as you remember for this action type the payload was going to be an object with a key called RGB and a uh, array of three numbers do you remember that so it's going to be red green and a blue value blue like this cool so before we test everything out we need to add the unchange listeners for each of our inputs so we're going to say unchange and for that we are going to say hmm let's see e and we're going to call our helper function update update rgb yes and inside of it we're going to give it a the red or the green or the blue now we are updating the red one so we're going to say that the uh, actually red is going to be e dot target dot value as number okay and because we're not going to change uh, the g and the b we're just going to say green going to be g and blue is going to be b something like that 
So let me check that. Oh, sorry, this is going to be not equals, but the two dots like that. All right. So let's do the copy paste business in here. I'm going to do it for the green, but this time this is going to be the R, which is red, but we are modifying the green. And also we are going to do the same on change. This time for the blue, okay? So we're gonna say, hey, you are going to move from here. You're gonna see G and the B for the blue is going to be updated like this. So before we run the code, okay, and test it on the browser, uh, I believe there is a mistake. We need to fix it in here because if you get to the color reducer in here, it is uh, giving the hex code of the color. Okay, when you give it the RGB, red, green, blue colors from the RGB, all right, it converts to the code, but we need the hashtag. Okay, this hashtag in here is not going to be added uh, via this RGB.hex function. We need to do it or to add it manually. So we're gonna say, hashtag plus this one okay and this is pretty fine because tab script is not going to take care of that it's just about strings and not strings anyway so this is just uh, an addition you have to fix it before you go in the browser and test it so if you get a neck in here you can change it a little bit in here and as you can see the colors are now being changed and updated voila congratulations so now you have passed successfully a dispatch as a prop down to some components and use them in there and you declare the signatures hello everybody and welcome back do you remember from the previous lecture we had this kind of issue in here that we said we need to add a hashtag and stuff like that so basically you may wonder can we use like the template literals as type for variables and stuff in TypeScript well yes you can do that so let's see in this video we're going to talk about this specifically imagine that or first of all let's see what is exactly a template literal it's like using these two characters and inside of them you can say like blah blah you know just a string and after that you can have between code braces after a dollar sign you can put uh, like a variable or whatever else in here okay so things like that so this is simply what a template literal is about i'm sure you are aware about it actually it's a very basic feature in um re uh, in uh, javascript and it was recently introduced into typescript 2 i believe typescript 4 and 3 or 2 i believe so so let's just get on the top of this file in here and let's say that you have a type let's call it hex color okay and now you can tell typescript that this type is going to be a string that starts with for example a hashtag followed by a string nice right so this is completely a signature this is a type which says only strings are allowed that start with a hashtag okay you see this is very nice actually and very powerful you can use it as a type in uh, typescript so what other patterns do we have something like this you can use it like uh, let's say rgb string you want a template for this you can simply say that this is going to be starting with rgb and between parentheses it's going to be a number huh, nice right and also another number for the g and for the blue also we can have another number Cool, right? So this is another pattern you can achieve using template literals as a type in TypeScript. Of course, uh, for the RGB, usually the uh, numbers start from 0 to 255, I believe. You cannot do any kind of ranging numbers and stuff, but it's still very powerful to limit the strings that are accepted, for example, in the RGB string type. They got to follow this pattern. So, uh, to show you some more perhaps useful uh, case of this feature that you can do, perhaps if you have a type, let's say we have uh, the color formats, they can be, let's say, they can be RGB, for example, and let's go with only hex, okay? So, as you can see in here, for these action types, in this uh, type in here, it is update hex, also update 
RGB. So the hex and the RGB is being changed. We can make use of this template literal feature of TypeScript and do something like this. I can say type, for example, the valid action types that we can have are in the template literal. We say they start with update dash inside of this. You simply give it a color for no color format color formats so if you save it if you hover over these action types oh you see so the type that we have for action types is either update hex or update rgb nice yeah it's a very powerful feature and instead of hard coding all the text in here like this you can simply go ahead and use these action types instead for the type key so as you can see it can make your codes a lot more clean and more readable one more uh, you know use of this hex color for example you can say if you have a function like let's say a constant is hex color and you are receiving a uh, str as string and you are going to say return s dot or str starts with hashtag okay so if you hover over this is hex color it is a boolean okay it returns uh, it is true or false okay but if you want to make it more informative all right you can simply come in here and tell that this is going to return that str is hex color now you hover over this is hex color oh this is nice right very much more informative than the uh the boolean thing in here so it says yes str is of this template literal tem uh, uh, theme that you have in here nice and if you wonder where you can use such a functionality actually when you deal when you're fetching data a bunch of data from an api and you are not sure what type are they you can do such checks on them and cast them to the proper type you know based on the check that you do yeah very much powerful i just wanted to uh, showcase this uh, template literal feature of typescript and how you can use it to make your codes cleaner and more efficient hello everybody and welcome back i have a practice for you at the beginning of this video i want to figure out a way whenever you click on any of these colors okay i want them to update the color in here all right and of course i will do the other way in this set colors the other inputs in here where they are not working you can even go and mess with them if you like you can choose which path you want to do the practice but uh, so in case you want to add a listener for these inputs or these ones so when you click on a color they update this color in here okay you can pause the video and get back see how we do it together okay because in the previous videos we talked about how to pass the dispatch to for example the uh, the two rgb component if you remember and we can update the color using them so basically these are going to be somehow similar to them i will put that mission on you so you can do it yourself but for this lesson we are going to go with clicking on each of these colors even these colors so when you click on them they are going to update the color very well okay let's get back to the code so in the uh, app.tsx as you can see we have passed this dispatched in this set colors we can also uh, send it to the saved colors okay so I'm going to work first on these two colors in here later on you can do exactly the same for these other uh, two areas of colors so let's just pass the dispatch here first okay so it starts telling it us it says that saved colors component is not expected to receive any props named dispatch let's go to the saved color and see what's going on there and by the way i want to mention something if you see lots of these styles in line styles in here i know that's not what you're gonna have in a real project but i just want to keep things simple please do not uh, or at least forgive me about this this is just for demonstration purposes okay so i just want to mention it in here all right let's get back to the dispatch signature so let's add the dispatch in the uh what were i let me just check it once again the saved colors i just missed it for a second yep in here as you can see we yet do not have the dispatch so let's add it we're gonna say dispatch 
is going to be dispatch from react oh come on let me just import it myself always have to do it manually sometimes so dispatch and for that we're gonna say no the color actions that we import from the reducer already okay let's come down in here and we are going to define it in this component we're going to say dispatch so we can use it so do, 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 for the saved color okay okay i believe that we need to pass it in here so i'm going to say dispatch this patch is going to be the dispatch in here so yes we need to go to the saved color component again in here as the sub component and we are going to define it once again in the props so we can do it in the on click but later on let me do it for now the simple way i'm going to grab this from here to save us some a little bit of time okay this is going to be from react not importing i don't know what's wrong with that anyway so let's just import this from react here like this and also we define it in here dispatch so where is the color the color i believe is in this one and in here believe it or not we can also once again pass it down but let's just do it as the on click in here so i'm going to say instead of that dispatch and of course we're going to give it a uh, type value so let's say type is going to be let's see if we have any suggestions yes so we are going to update the hacks and we're going to have the payload which is going to be the hex color so as you can see the hex color is also being passed as a prop by the codes that i provided you for this demo project so we simply need to mention it in here so very basic this component is receiving uh several props including this hex color when you click on it it's going to dispatch to our reducer an action type with the update hex with the payload of the hex color that it is being receiving from its props so let's verify that go back to the browser and because we did it for this one if i click on this the color of this change let's click yeah sounds like it's changing click on that yo very well so we can do exactly the same for all of this just you need to pass the dispatch as a prop so this is the basic idea you can do it yourself as a small lovely practice hello everybody welcome back so as you can see in here we have used the reducer to send the dispatch as a prop so that when you click for example on this it's going to dispatch some uh, hex code but the better way of doing this is how about we provide these components with uh, the dispatch itself so they do the dispatch in there and we do not need to do that uh, props drilling you know passing the dispatch prop you know two three times to several components and they're gonna be some kind of mess okay so in this uh, video we are going to focus on the context api and we're gonna see if we face any issues any challenges and of course we're gonna see how to overcome them getting back i'm going to create a new folder in the uh, src same as the reducer let's just create a directory called the context and inside of it we're gonna say context.tsx so i do not need to mention this is a very basic uh, context i'm very sure that you know about the context api it's kind of a tree you know you can wrap the application or the components you wish to send them some props and values and they're gonna have access to, uh, to those values and props using the use context hook from the uh, react okay so that's the first thing we want to do is to create let's say the color context is going to be create context from the oh come on create context let's import it from i don't know what's going on with my vs code but let's do it manually not complaining more than that from react 
okay i think it needs areas or something so create context and inside the create context oh what do we have a default value hmm default value you have seen that default value needed for the user state and also for the user user well very simple we can just simply give it an object with a hex color let's say and give it just a simple value of i don't know fdge whatever is this a color actually i don't know <laughs> just keep it like this so if you hover over this color context hmm so the type of this color context is an object or actually a react context with uh, the hex color as a string okay fair enough so life sounds very nice we're gonna see if we say face any issues let's just export it for now and we are going to create the color provider so again we're going to say export constant let's say color provider and for now we're not going to give it the children let's just say it returns a let's say color context we just created up in there dot provider and inside of it we're going to wrap the children children okay and of course for the children we need to enter that as a props so we're going to say children children correct okay and of course we're going to give it the props with children oh i have to do it manually once again here okay it's working working and we simply need to give it a value for this provider and let's say okay i'm gonna give you an object with hex color and let's give it a value of hashtag dab i don't know a55 so let's see beside this hex color okay the value of hex color we need to give it the dispatch right we want to make our components to access the uh, hex color and the dispatch but there's one issue arises in here you only can use the use reducer use reducer inside a react component which means in here right and if you want to actually say like this this patch blah 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 you cannot do that why because you only have to do uh, the export of this color context outside this color provider a kind of paradox correct so how can i access this dispatch in here this is the issue that we want to focus actually as part of this video for fixing things first of all we need to give this create context a uh, type in here so first of all we are going to say hey we are going to receive a hex color which is going to be string and also a dispatch and the dispatch type is going to be uh let's say this patch from react what's going on here today let's just import it okay so we have this dispatch and the dispatch is going to have the color actions if you remember let's just make things correct but now you may say all right let's go and give it the dispatch here but oops we cannot do that because we only can access the dispatch from inside this component inside of here so what's the trick the very simple thing that we can have in here is that maybe you say let's make this optional hmm the error is gone this is correct way but not a great one so if you just hover over this one in here this color contact you see that dispatch can be undefined so you're gonna say well i promise to define it every time blah 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 but there is an edge case it can happen okay it can you can give it an undefined dispatch and it can cause problems for your application so what is the other also correct but less or perhaps better approach not completely great but a better one is to do something like this for that let's just grab this is getting very much drawing in here i'm going to say i have a type let's name it color context state go like this and i'm just going to grab it from here and put it in here so the solution is that in here it says hey this is not uh, same as the color context state type i'm going to say you know what 
just to pretend that what I am giving you in here, for example, this hex color for a minute, that it is following or based on the color context state. Well, you may say, hmm, this is somehow like the previous one, but if you go to this, for example, um, I think in the index that is X, do you see this? Well, the same guys behind React are somehow doing it in here. It's like telling React, you know what, chill. There's something you don't know, but I know. Like, I am going to have this dispatch just five or six lines after this, uh, you know, line in here. So definitely, this is somehow, you know, maybe you argue that, or uh, this is just the simplest thing and perhaps the more valid, simple approach for f for fixing this issue that I'm going to use in this module in here. But if you see in here, we check the value yelling at you tab script that says, hey, you know what? There is a property dispatch and it's missing. You need to give it to me. So that's fine. That's cool. A little bit of safe, not bad. So let's create the dispatch and pass it to the value in here. Okay, so let's get back to the app.tsx and I am going to steal some stuff. I'm going to take this from here, cut it and just paste it inside my provider and we've got to do a couple of imports in here we want the color reducer also we want the initial state and one more step is that we need to de pass the dispatch in here great so our context api is somehow complete for now but for that let me just not forgetting this one because we're not hard coding anything in here let's just read it from the state all right let's make use of this color provider inside this app component so i'm going to say constant i am going to destructure the hex color and also it has a dispatch this patch from the use context and for that i'm going to get the color context that i just created in that context file color did I? Yes, I have exported it correctly. Okay, so now we have the hex color and we have the dispatch, which is being dispatched in here. Before we verify everything, we need to get back to the index in here and wrap our application with the uh, color provider that we just created in here. Get this from there and here we go. Let's verify and see if it's working yeah it's working okay but we can now easily implement the same functionality for the rest of these buttons in here using the context api so let me close this one so let's go to one of the files in here in the components i believe in the color toot, 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 toot. what is that let's go here in the colors watch okay so is it in here so in the uh, saved color in here we have this file in here so in the uh, let me see we have this color okay i just got it in here let me go to definitions and here we go yeah so we have the end click i can just get rid of this in here so in the common folder we have this color change so let's get on the top of these components and we're going to say use context context come on okay let's import it manually from the react import no 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 import this from react okay so down in here i'm going to say use context and i am going to give it the color context like this so what i really care about in here is only the dispatch that comes from the use so I'm going to say dispatch and let me just remove this on click because we don't need it simply we're going to say dispatch and we're going to say the type is going to be oh yeah we have the suggestion once again update the hex and also for the payload we are going to say we have the hex color which is coming as a prop to this component 
So now we can verify everything, get back to the browser and yeah, everything is completely working. All right, welcome back everybody. So before we deep dive into the generics, let's talk about some of the TypeScript utility helpers, okay? It's just about giving you a hint, you know, and a mentality that such tools do exist. So whatever you need them, you go look for them. We're gonna start with the keyword key of. Let's assume that we have an object like this and it contains two keys, you know, key one and key two, you know, dummy data in here. I can do something like this. I say type, let's say, for example, the, uh, just give it a name. You know, it can say res or result or whatever. And I can say that the type, this result type is going to be key of, as you can see, it is suggested by TypeScript. So I say key of object type, that simple. Now, what does this key of means? It simply means that the type of this result, this result type means the value is, can be only key one or key two, you know, that's it. So what exactly that means? Let's hover over it. Yeah, as you can see, it says in here, you know, not very descriptive, let me see. If you just give it something like, let's say, and string. So I want it to be uh, one of the keys of this object, plus it needs to be string. Now, if you hover over it, you will see that it's key one and key two. Of course, if you remove this string, it can be anything, but it must be the key one and key two. So if you type like this, let's say const, you know, test constant, let's say, and if you want to give it a value for that, of course, you need to say that this is going to be of the type result, then it, if you open the quotations, it's going to, uh, give you the suggestion. It says the only values you can have for test is key one and key two, which of that? So this is the whole idea of the key of. Let's go to the next one. Let's imagine that we have such an object in here. If we want to define a type based on the uh, values of this object, it's very simple. We can say, for example, a type, let's call it test zero, okay, and it's going to be let's say the name of the object which is obj and between color braces you need to give it the key of which value you want to grab the uh, type of it so if i say for example p1 now if you hover over this test zero it says that this type only accepts d why because d is the value of p1 of this prop one you can call it which I mentioned it in here as the only type accepted for this. So if you want, for example, your type to only accept I am zero, you need to mention this zero in here. So simply saying type, actually this is not zero, this needs to be, let's say one. Yeah, now it makes better. So type test zero, and I'm going to say from the name of the object that we have, obj or any other name that you have, and you need to mention the key which you need the value of it, which is zero in here, I say zero. Now, if you hover over test zero, you see that this type only accept I am zero. If you, for example, say in here const test zero const whatever, it's just a simple name, I don't want to name it, and you say that its type is going to be test zero, then the only value you can give, if you give it, for example, 25, it's gonna yell at you. It says, hey, it only accepts I am zero. So if you give it now, I am zero as suggested, the error is gone. So this is how you can grab the value of a single key from an object and use it as a signature or a type, simply by mentioning the name of the object and followed by the key between color braces. So I'm just showing you random stuff in here. So to give you the idea, which is the point of this, video, imagine that we have this object in here and I want to define a type that only allows the values, each value of these ones, you know, not just a single one, you know, all of them. How to do that? Well, you say type, uh, res, or whatever name you give it in here, and you say that this type is going to only accept each value from this object. How to do that? You simply use the make of key of object. Now, what does this mean? 
if you hover over result in here res you see that the res type only accepts the number a or b okay this is just in case somewhere somehow you need to grab some kind of type like this in your react applications this is how you can make use of this it's just a kind of competition okay next one is about the unions let's imagine that we have um two types like set one or set two it's just a name i don't know it's not a real set from the data, uh, data structures so the set one has a or b or c and the set two is b or c or d as you can see in here that b is repeated and c is also repeated for making a union type between these two types it's very simple you can say type let's call it union no union type or whatever name you want to give it and it's going to be set one union with set two now if you hover over union type okay a b a b c and d that's how you set a union between two types next feature is the intersection intersection is actually combining uh props you can think of it or types together it only um takes into account the uh, common types or the shared types among two sets in here let me just do it in action and see it for yourself so I say intersections or whatever name you give it inters something like that and it's going to be set one and set two and if you go to that yes you see only b and c because b and c are only both shared among the two types and this is useful when you want to combine the props that uh, you want to send to a single component okay you, you simply just do it like this and it's going to get rid of the uh, not common actually props that you have maybe okay the next thing i'm going to talk about is the conditional types imagine that you want to create some kind of types that help you check if a component can accept a, uh, a kind of prop you know for example um, you have perhaps a button that can only accept size and color as props and anything else passed to it should be excluded i mean kind of that kind of check that perhaps you want to have in your react application uh, which can result into a more type safe application so i'm going to paste a code don't get confused i'm going to explain it for you in here so imagine that we have a type that is called can accept prop this is only the t and this is the k okay don't get confused just change the name to help you understand it more so for this can accept prop it simply uses the extends and key of okay utility tools of typescript says if the prop is one of the keys of this object okay for example uh, if the component props is this button props and you give it this color in here it checks and says well the color is key of component props which is button props and so prop extends that and it's going to return true in this case or uh, this one is going to return false because icon does not exist you know we don't have such a key called icon all right so this is going to return true or false types based on the condition that you pass to it for example we have can button accept color yes they can because the button props that you are passing okay contains the color so the prop extends key of components in this case and it's going to return true but can button accept icon for example you create this kind of type so you're going to use this can accept prop you feed it with the button props okay and say icon it goes to check it says does the prop that we have which is icon extends the list of keys from this component which is this one we say we have size, we have color, no icon, nope, again return, false. So uh, the other final types that we can have, the result one, result two, you say that this is true and this is false. This is, as I said, one of the use cases just to help you how to make use of conditional types in case you want to uh, uh, only accept set of props for your components. That's how you do it.
Okay, the next one is fairly easy. Uh, so far, we have created types that uh, define a type for the values inside such an object that has key and value. How about defining a type for the key itself? Well, that's very simple. You can simply say, let's say another type object with string keys is going to be uh, this is equals. Okay. So for the keys, we are going to say the keys are string and the value can be number, for example, or a string also. You can also iterate over a union. Let's say we have this object like this. And instead of saying, for example, A equals to B number and B also being a number and for example let's say c is also a number instead of that for doing this simply we can eliminate this from here and by saying that we have k in it's either a either b or either c now if you hover over this object you will see that a number, B number, C number. Just simpler and clearer. You can even do it like this. You can make another one. Let's just <laughs> call it mask. And this is going to be, come on, what is this mistake? Anyway, so you can say that K in, it's going to be in object. Okay. Sorry, it can be key of object. And it's going to be a boolean like this now hover over mask oh yeah you can see a b c is a boolean so it iterates over the keys because we say in key of object all right so the key of object are a b c and it says for all of them create some keys for me each having a boolean value the other one is Pick. What is pick? Well, simply you can create a type using pick by saying, let's say, give it a name of new type, and it's going to say the word pick. It's built in TypeScript, as you can see. And instead of these, we can say from this object type in here, okay, if you say comma, it says, okay, k extends k of t. t is the object type that we have in here, and we need to give it which keys from this object type do you want to include in your new type object so i'm going to say i want one and i want three so if you now go and hover over this new type you see that it is a new object type with one and three as a key value so okay the last thing is the emit so you can say type new type two and you can say emit okay and of course once again we give it this object so we're going to say object and it says which one do you want to emit this time i'm going to go with uh one also just i have used them in the previous one let's exclude them here if you hover a new type you see that it has two and four and the one and three are emitted from it Okay, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. They were just some of the utility tools that we have built in TypeScript and they may help you in your journey in typing React applications. Hello everybody, welcome back. So in this session, we wanna talk about the generics in TypeScript. And in the upcoming couple of lectures, we are trying to fix a problem, you know, an issue that we had in the context. Okay, when when we use the as keyword for working around an issue that was rising so first of all i decided that why not let's talk about generics and see what kind of magic we can achieve with typescript generics so for doing that we are going to use an online editor if you go to google and type typescript playground you will have this beautiful site in here typescript uh, lang.org if you click on that you're going to face something like this in here just to save some time, I'm going to paste a very simple and basic TypeScript code in here, and we're going to walk through that and see what are we dealing with. Okay, don't be surprised, please. This is a very simple thing. I'm going to explain for you. So, first of all, we have a type in here named book, which has three keys, author, title, price, and each of them is going to be string, but the price is 
number. Then we have this action types using the le template literals. I think you saw that in another video. It's something very basic should do for you. So it says update dash. This is the uh, constant string and based on uh, the key of book you know so the keys of the book are author title price so if you hover over these action types you see that yeah, this is very powerful you don't need to type this long string in here simply using these template literals as you saw before that the action type it can be update author or update title or update price so this is the purpose of this one what are these actions these actions is another type as you can see indicated in here which receives two values first we have the t and then we have the k what are these the t is actually can be uh anything for example in our case it's going to be the book this type of book in here can be the T and uh, the second thing as we see in here is the title what is the title oh what is this thing in here this is very simple this simply indicates that the second uh, value is going to be first a key of T so what are the key of T in case the T is book well it can be author title price and it must be string so this title in here is a string and also it's equal to one of the keys of this book in here which is the t okay so this uh statement in here simply indicates that the second value which is the title in here needs to be or uh, extends the key of t what is t this is the book it has one two three does it yes title exists as a key of the book and it needs to be string which in case yeah it is a string nice so well you maybe get mad at me and say oh this sounds too complicated but seriously on real large code basis you're gonna face a lot of such statements they're gonna save you a lot of time as uh, you hover over for example this in here you see that it's completely dynamic okay you don't need to uh, you know repeat yourself and create lots of junk codes as you can see in the payload in here also is just simply saying that this payload is like t and the value of key based on the key of that this is very simple if you get confused you can think of it like this you know now the t in this case which is update title action okay if you want to say update price action you would give it the book but instead of this title it would say the for example price okay so now we are working on the title uh, and the payload is going to be i want to say t and k now it is book so it's as simple as saying that dot if the k is title so it's like this or maybe like this title and you know, just grabbing the value of it so indicating what the payload should be and stuff like that and once again this is great for reusability for example if you hover over this update title action you see that the type is dynamically set to update title if you change it to, to for example let's say price in here you see that price and the payload is also number you didn't need to change anything see so this is very much powerful when it comes to uh, having reusability in mind and before we finish this lecture if you wonder why is this saying hey why is it string for example in this case well we said that the k extends or is um, a key the keys in here are author title for example if you give it uh, let's say price you know is it still string yes because the keys of this book each of them even price are string the value is number and what we're talking about in here is just the value which is one of the keys not uh, the value of that key the corresponding value of it so yeah simply that's why it's a string in here even if you keep the uh, you know the second one as price for example hello everybody welcome back so before I move on to react and start using this generic thing for solving that context issue let's put some more light on the generics and see how exactly we can really benefit from them by doing some a little more examples by that so you are all familiar with a data data structure called linked list you know it's like it has an a member or an item inside of it followed by an item that is linked or is mentioning the next node inside that linked list you know something like that you know it may sound weird for you but it's very simple the basic for that let me just create a type for it like this you know let's call it uh 
linked you know like linked list or something like that and I'm going to say hey you are going to have a T and also inside of it it's going to have first a value and the value is going to be of type T it can be a string number whatever you pass to it and also it is optional to have a next value which is in turn is also another linked with a type also T so this only indicates that every instance that wants to be of type linked and the T number or string whatever is going to have a value with the same type that we pass to it and also optionally it can have or be mentioning to the next linked object like this in here what does that mean exactly let's do uh, let's say for example we are going to have a text linked or you know linked list or something like that you can name it whatever you like and it's going to be of type linked that we just created in here and of course the value is going to be string all right and for it it's yelling at you TypeScript it says hey this is mandatory to have a value it's missing as you can see in the type and the value is T whatever the T value and if you hover again in here it is exactly mentioning that it needs to be string so let's give it for example a value by mistake let's say 23 oh it's yelling at you again it says you gave me a number it's not assignable to type string so you know it's figuring out things here totally what I'm trying to emphasize in this video is that whatever you can uh, make use of TypeScript to do the business for you just let it do it okay uh, do not step in whenever you don't need to when TypeScript can figure out the types for you let it do it okay don't do the business yourself by doing lots of typing here and there and creating lots of junky uh, types what is that meaning exactly well this is just the point a couple of minutes you're gonna see what I mean so let me just change this to let's say three okay and optionally we can have a next value which is going to be if you hover over it it's going to be again undefined or it can be a linked with a string so if you want to give it a value it needs to be exactly in here it says hey now that you have a next it needs to have a value and the value simply is going to be if you give it a number in here it's not gonna accept it if you hover it's a string that's what I mean okay TypeScript is doing the business it is figuring out the types of every object or every instance that we have around here so let's say four for example great cool cool to demonstrate furthermore the point that I told you by letting TypeScript do the business for you let's imagine that I want to have a function that creates actually the linked list for me by making use of these types and things that we have so let's name it uh, build or create a link all right let's assume you have this kind of function and also it's going to receive a value and that value is going to be string right and in return it's going to give back a linked okay and the value is also going to be a string or the type of the value is going to be a string and inside of it it's simply going to say hey you know what return just uh, let's say a value whatever okay so nice great this is exactly a builder that uh, makes use of this type in here and it creates for you uh, you know a linked list but the point is in here a string linked list what if we wanted to have a uh, a building link function like this that uh, is going to create a linked list but for a number hmm well simple we have to duplicate this right and create one for the numbers but this is not efficient this is what I mean if you just a little bit make use of TypeScript you can let it do the business for you and instead of duplicating this logic in here you can just keep it as it is by a single function doing multiple stuff for you for multiple types how to do that just an example in here very very simple you only need to hear before the function is to define a generic parameter like t in here but it's getting confused you just need to give it like a comma in here and instead of hard coding a specific type for example string you just need to tell it hey t and for the linked list also i want to have a t so what you are basically saying that hey there is a generic called t 
The value you are going to receive is also of that T type and the linked list you are going to generate for me or return for me after this function is also of that type. If, it's, if you give it a string in here, it's going to take a string value and build a linked list for you, which is based on uh, that string or the number. If you want to make it, uh, you know, more used just to make it more clear, very easy. We can say, for example, let's have we need first a string. Okay, const. Okay, we need a string. String linked list or whatever you call it it's by saying build link and you just need to give it a value for example let's give it a string in here i say hi right and we're gonna build another one saying for example uh, ta -ta 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 -ta, number number linked and again we use the same function in here saying build link and this time i'm gonna give it a number i say you see for now typescript says hey the value is unknown if i give it a number it says okay let's hover over string linked and you can see it says okay string linked is a linked type with a string and this one it's a linked of type very nice you see we didn't even mention any generics in here and typescript by following this um uh, this pattern in here we had t t t as soon as you give a value to any of these t you know as soon as you um pass a type a specific type for the any of this t typescript is going to figure out that type for all the t you have in here including this t in this linked list and that is super power you don't need to you know do it yourself and tell typescript hey i want to give it a string and as a result i want this to be also a string just as simple as this it is figuring things for us so the ethical point of this lesson is that whenever you are typing typing uh, a TypeScript project actually and you see that you are writing lots of boilerplate code and you are happy by okay I'm writing type, uh, TypeScript stuff well you gotta step back there and think about why do do I need all these boilerplate codes TypeScript is here to uh, help me keep things simple as much as it can so using such techniques that you can see in here that can save you a lot of time and also remove lots of junk code from your code bases and keep it cleaner and more maintainable hello everybody welcome back so in this video we're gonna make use of the generics to fix an issue if you don't remind remember the issue in the context that we created for our color demo project as you remember we had this uh, color context okay and we had to give it a default value and for our context we said that for the color context we needed two values the hex color which is a string like this and a dispatch you know the only thing that we are going to uh, share here and there on the application using the create context a dispatch and a hex color which is a string but the issue arises that in this uh, stage in here when we use the create context we could not use the dispatch as a default value in here like this you know saying okay the hex color default value is going to be this color and the dispatch is going to be blah 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 whatever hell why because if you want to create a dispatch and use it an initial value in here you need to use use reducer oops use reducer and use reducer is only allowed to be used inside a component like you know this color provider a kind of functional component or thing of it so when we do not have access to this dispatch in here and we cannot use it we try to somehow you know uh point out to typescript that this color context okay is going to be as type of color context state and as you can see in the color context state it is meant better to have a dispatch by using this as keyword we told typescript that hey dude you know what i know that i have to include a dispatch in here but trust me I am going to initiate it. I'm going to inject it. But right now, I don't have it. Just give me some time. That's what it means to say as color context. Okay. But this is not safe. This is not great because by any chance, if you just forget to give it this dispatch, it can kill your project. It can be cause a lot of troubles for you later on by debugging and stuff like that. So, long story short, 
We talked about generics and we want to see how exactly we can make use of generics to solve this issue instead of using this as how to have a more robust and correct um, solution. The first step is that we are going to this folder in context and I'm going to create a new file and let's call it uh, build or let's just keep it as this create in here. I'm going to say create context.ts but it kind of you know can have some kind of component let's just rename it in here and we're gonna have tsx okay now it's better so let's say for example we need to export this so we say export const and we're gonna say create context and it's going to be a kind of function like this so the whole idea is that we are going to because as you can see in here yet we do not have access to the dispatch so we can use the generic to tell create context that hey we are going to have something but yet we are not familiar with the type of it but we want to handle the generics somehow in this create context that in case we do not give it that thing in our case dispatch it's gonna yell at you you're gonna throw an error or something like that just to make sure that you definitely give it the dispatch so the first step is definitely to give it a generic so before this parent is you simply need to give it the t or c or whatever it's just a letter okay convention and as you can see in here whenever you want to create a context you need to give it an object like this which can have several key values like hex color dispatch blah 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 so the first thing we want to make sure that t is not an um, is not undefined or null or never okay we want to make sure that it is at least an empty object so we can do some checks on that all right so we are going to say extends t extends like this yeah now it's good so the very list for the T, the generic web pricing here, that it needs to be an object. And based on the values, of course, you can have some uh, nested values or any other values inside this object. But for now, it is satisfying our case to have an empty object. And now we are going to actually create an actual context. So let's call it for here, uh, context. It was color context, if you remember, but now it's generic. We're need to eliminate the color you know just to keep it context and then we're gonna say from react okay no react let's just go like this react dot create context and as you can see for react inside of it we need to give it a default value before that we need to define a type for the value that we're gonna give it in here so we say it is either t okay that at least an object or undefined and we give it the value of undefined so basically what we're saying in here that the context that we are creating in here is going to have one of these values it's either a t or undefined or no but i'm comfortable with undefined and we are going to do a check on this we say you know if it's undefined or the t is have something stuff blah 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 like that we are gonna see in a couple of minutes so let's just keep it like this for now and i'm going to import this react let me say import react from react yeah as you can see in here in the other example when created a context using this great context we could export it so we could use it in the other uh, components but in here because it's inside this create context function that we have we cannot export this context all right so we are going to create a kind of hook that makes use of this context in here all right so let's just call it const use context all right and then it's going to have some value in here so what this use context hook is going to do is that it's going to create a color let's call it color context for now that makes use of react dot use context okay we were doing this inside the components whenever we wanted to use the uh, context but we are doing it inside of here it's kind of encapsulation all right and then we're going to return that so as a feed we need to give it a context and we just created it inside of here okay so like this and finally we can say return color context fine so this use context hook is going to uh, use context of this context that we created and then it's going to return it plus uh, 
we need to return two things in here we need to return a provider so we can use this we can wrap our application with this context that we created and we need to return this use context so components can make use of the values that we're trying to share using our context simply saying it should be like this the first thing is use context this hook and then for the provider we are going to say context that we just created in here dot provider one more thing to make use is that to make this like uh, the user state okay, you know all familiar with user state it gives you two only two values it's a kind of array but it's not an array of infinite values just two values like this okay to make it look like a use state thing you can think of it like this you say const okay so this makes your array in here only having these two values nothing more all right so this is the point in here if you hover over this create context it says that it gives you a value either uh you know a read only function that returns a t or undefined and also it will give you another value which is react provider that also has the t or undefined so right now if you once again hover over this that in our create context oh come on get back where you go <laughs> it returns a function for the first one use context there is a function that has t or undefined and also the provider is t or undefined for solving the actual problem that we are doing all this stuff for that is that very simple now we have two cases it's either t you know which is a uh, kind of proper thing that we are expecting or undefined we need to eliminate the case of undefined so we do a check we say if we have undefined instead of the t generic we are going to for example through an error okay so this create context function in here in case you don't give it the proper t generic type it's going to throw an error instead of returning this thing in here and that's the solution that we are going to follow in fixing this issue a very simple check we are going to say inside use context we say if our color context okay is undefined which means we don't have a proper t we want to do something like this through new error and instead of that we're going to give it a message a value must be provided to the use context yeah it's not a perfect message but you can change it if you would like but this is kind of you know <laughs> how we do it somehow so yes basically whenever we use this create context we are going to create the context and if something comes out of this use context inside this color context then we are good we are going to return the color context and the use context blah 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 but if nothing comes out of it it still undefined we are going to throw this error so to verify this because we take care of this use context if you hover over this create context you see that that it's going to return the first value okay this use context is going to only be t if there is no t we can have an error and etc of course provider can be undefined because we are doing the check based on that but it's nice we have eliminated the undefined from this portion in here okay so this is how our solution ended finally let's make use of it let's get back to the context .tsx, and this is where exactly the problem happened and we have created something for this create context but let's replace everything so first of all we're not going to need early create context because we had it in the other file and uh, let's import it actually so let's just import the create context the custom create context that we just created I'm gonna say create context let's see yes I have it imported from there there we go cool so let me just remove this one and this create context is actually our create context and we're gonna not need this uh, value in here anymore let me just eliminate it okay and so if you hover over this color context now it returns for us a constant array 
with a function for the color context state and also the provider if you remember from the other file so let's just get rid of this and we're gonna say if you just forgot about them they are exactly in here as you can see you can just uh, say use context like this and also you can call the other one let's just give it a name saying context provider like this so we're just going to you know replace this other provider with our provider that is returned from our custom create context so far so good we got rid of some stuff and replaced them with our own stuff and for continue in the index.tsx the color provider steals the same we're not going to change it here so let's go up to the app.tsx now we need to use our own use context instead of this so first let's remove this from here and also we're not needing this from here and we are going to import use context of our own also we don't need any arguments in here okay cool so we fix it in here let's see if we have used this uh, use context in any other file so we fix it the same way i think we did it in another file let me check let me do a check and see i think here in this folder let me close the extra things in here okay so in this file in here under the common color change we exactly use the same use context let me just get rid of this use context from here come on do it do also you're not needed not even you and let's import it from our own context file and yo the error is gone so this is just a you know another beneficial examples that you can see why we create our own hook because it's encapsulated in here in this uh, context we have done everything inside of here okay the other components do not care about the process of creating the context and giving it any uh, default values okay they just simply do hey you know what i need a dispatch so let's do it like this this structure the dispatch from the use context so if in case somewhere in the time you wanted to use something uh, other than the context api for example you wanted to migrate to redux you don't need to go over all your application and actually uh, change the codes because all your components in your application react application are something like this they are encapsulated with the hook so you only need to change the codes of your use context hook for example inside of here so this is a good example also of encapsulating the logic of your application and to verify this idea is that we did not need to import any use context and create context from react we simply did this small lovely import use context from our own file which is named context i think i made the point here and finally i think we are now ready to reveal it in the browser see if it's working okay now if i click any of this it needs to dispatch using our new logic right it should change the color using the dispatch action yo it's working nice nice very nice okay so as you can see we solved the issue of you know having that conflict in the creating the context as you can see in here using this logic and of course we get rid of that as keyword thing that was somewhere around in here and the whole idea was to create our own create context like this and we just uh using the generics feature of typescript we had to control in case we don't have the proper values for our create context and etc so that was just an example of how to use typescript for creating a custom create context and how it can help us along with some other things that we learned along this journey so now it's only up to you if you are if you're if you're against uh casting using the as keyword this is how you may want to fix your problem but if you think oh why to have all these kind of codes and for just a small as keyword let's just have as keyword and i'm sure that i am not going to fall in the trap of undefined or any other things so this is how we do it like this
And we also mentioned that using this kind of encapsulation is good because maybe in some point of time you decided to not using context API and let's say you want to use Redux. So to have it even more encapsulation, we can even make it go further, okay? As I am going to show you exactly right now how to encapsulate the state management code of your react application and do not expose it only expose generic uh, react hooks so other components can consume so whenever you want to change something you only change the codes behind those uh, custom hooks because as you can see now we are exporting our use context and everybody can find out that hey, we are using context api not redux okay so let's have some example of how to make this more encapsulated for instance uh, we are calling or we are consuming the hex color is a string value in different places of this demo project we can create a use uh, a custom hook for that specific value for example we can call it const use hex color you know this is just about hex color it doesn't imply uh, if it's a context api or it's a redux or whatever it's very much generic and you can say it like this okay it is going to say let's destructure the hex color from where from use context okay because our hex color is inside this use context and then it's simply going to say return the hex color that's simple so anywhere in your application you need to display or use the hex color value you are going to use this hook in here use hooks uh, hex color in, instead of using these use context so this is more encapsulated and you are hiding the real business logic which is your context api behind the scenes and not sharing it with uh, all over the place in your project and even if you make it uh, go further because we need some components you are going to need the uh the dispatch right so you can simply say const use dispatch okay so just dispatching or firing an action despite uh, how is it going to be fired using context api or redux okay they don't care about it the other react components in our projects okay so let's say exactly the same thing somehow but in here we are going to say this patch and use context and of course we're going to say return the dispatch and if you hover over it you will see that use dispatch is going to give you a dispatch of the color actions that's all they will know about the outsiders okay all the logic of our state management is being encapsulated and hidden okay inside of this file and uh, it's really easier to manage it this way plus your entire application will be much more type safe and they don't need to deal with types and stuff like that it's everything in one place and even can go further and make some specific dispatches for example for updating the hex color or updating the rgb color and export them exactly as you do as we written in here so it's really powerful com uh, i mean uh, composing the typescript with this pattern is that whatever as i mentioned before if you want to change from context api to redux nothing going to change in your application if you want to switch back from redux to context api again nothing going to happen or change in all of your react application they don't care about the process that you are going to take in here and this is very much great for maintaining projects and uh, large code bases so in typescript both types and interfaces are used to define the shape of data but they have some differences in their behavior and usage Interfaces are commonly used for defining the structure of objects and classes. They help you define what properties and methods an object should have. They are especially useful when you want to define a contract or a blueprint for objects that will share common properties and methods. Interfaces can be extended, which means you can add more properties or methods to them later if you need. This makes them more flexible and extensible types types are also used for defining the shape of data but they can be used for more than just objects and classes they are often used for defining specific types like functions or creating aliases for complex types which can be handy for readability and reusability unlike interfaces types cannot be reopened or extended to add new properties or methods 
Once you define a type, you cannot add to it later on. That's simple. Now, which one to choose? Well, if you are defining a public API that you want others to extend and build upon, using interfaces is a good choice. It allows consumers of your API to add more properties or methods to your interfaces as they need. For React components specifically, you know, the props and the states, it's recommended to use uh, the types. This helps to maintain consistency in your code base and provides more constraints on the types used in your components. Welcome back everybody. In this video, we're going to talk about function overloading. What does that mean? Well, TypeScript allows you to uh, create a function and assign to it several types, several signatures. Okay, so how is that and how can it be beneficial in actual? Let's just have a very simple function, which is the add function. You give it two numbers and it is going to return the sum of those two numbers, just to give you the idea of how it looks. So let's create the function with the first signature. So let's say we have function, let's call it add function. It's going to take two numbers, first, which is a number, and the second number, which is also a number. And this function is going to return a promise with a number. So this is the function that we have, first of all, and it is the add function, which, uh, let me fix this here, this is B. Okay, what is this? It says function implementation is missing are not immediately following the declaration. Well, this is going to be gone when we use it somehow. The other one, which is also named, so when we overload a function, the name is going to be the same, but the signature is going to be different. Also, it's going to receive a number and also a second number. Let's call it again B. And this time, this is going to receive a function, you know, a callback function, which we're going to give it a type in just a minute. And for this fn, we need to tell it, we're going to have a type, let's call it callback type, for example. And it's going to be a function that receives a number. Let's call it result. And the result is going to be number. And definitely void because it's not going to return anything. So let's see what we have in here. So I just missed this like this. Okay, right. So the type of this callback function that we are going to receive like this, as you can see in here, the second signature of the function in here is void. Okay, and it's also receiving a callback function. And we can also define another perhaps body for this which can be a function add and it's going to have everything inside of this exactly in here but this function is going to be this time uh like this okay optional all right the operation is going to be the let's call it the result which is a plus b and if we have a function a callback function we say if we have a callback function we're going to return or we're going to call the callback function with the result like this else we're going to return the promise dot resolve the result something like that Oops, this is going to be return. So as you can see here, we have created a function with the same name with different signatures, as you can see in here. So whenever you want to call it, you can say, for example, add, well, you can say two and three. Okay, this is going to be, for example, this one, because uh, this also can receive a callback function like saying, you know, let's say it receives a result, which is a number. And definitely it's going to do whatever, you know, just console log 
the result or something like that. It's just a callback function that you can pass to it. So the basic idea is here that we can create a function with different signatures that is going to be called overloading a function using TypeScript. Now, if you are confused on how exactly things are going on in here when it comes to function overloading, plus to make you, uh, I mean, to make you a better mentality of partial applications like this we have, uh, I have a practice for you, okay? So this is going somehow an exercise for you. I'm gonna paste a code in here and explain for you your mission. So I have counted it for you in here. Uh, imagine that the thing that you are going to create is a function. Of course, it's going to be using the overloading feature of TypeScript. So the add function, if you give it two numbers, it's going to return the sum of them. For example, three and two, it's going to return five. If you give it a single number, it's going to return a function that accepts the second number like this. So if you give it a single number like this in here, add three, it's going to return you a function. So this is going to be a function. And when you give the newly returned function a new number, it's going to sum the previously received plus the new number. Three plus five is going to be eight. All right, I give you a few seconds. Go and try to do it using the uh, piece of code that I just uh, wrote for you in here. I'm going to uh, perhaps control Z and paste it in here for you. So please, do the add function using the uh, function overloading and get back to me so we do it together. Okay, welcome back. So we are going to create the first signature of our add function in here. I'm going to say we have a function, let's call it add. If it receives a number, a single number, it's going to return another function that is going to receive a second number, let's call it B, which in turn is going to return a number that is supposed to be the sum of the two numbers. The second signature is very simple. It says if we call the add function with two numbers like A and B, simply it's going to return a number some of them. The third signature, which is going to be kind of fun, it says, well, we have to receive a number, but the second number, B, is going to be optional, okay? And based on that, what we are going to return is either a number, so in case you give it two numbers like A and B, it's going to sum them and it's going to return a number oh i just made a mistake perhaps no it's the same just eye contact so it is going to return a number okay like this case in here we have two numbers so if the optional number b has not been uh, received as an argument it's going to return okay the, the type of the thing that is going to return for you is another function receiving b the other number and of course, it's going to return you a number in that case, which is the sum of them. Let me just fix this in here. This is going to be, I believe, like this, okay. So the first thing is that I am going to check the B. If the B or the second number is undefined, okay, so if B is undefined, I'm going to return a another function okay, that receives B, which is a number, and is going to return the same function add, but this time it's going to give it the A and B. Otherwise, it's going to return A plus B. Okay, so let me get rid of that from here and test it somewhere else so for testing all the thing in here we say add five and then we say nine which is going to add five here we give it a single number so based on this it's going to return a function that receives the second number so this is actually a function that receives the second number in here which is four and then it says add 
A and B. A and B is 5 and 4. Add A and B. So this is supposed to be 9. Okay. And here we have 6. We give it 3 and 3. It is going to be this case and it's going to return actually this part A plus B, which is 6. Okay. Let's go to the. Let's run it first. And yes, as you can see here, we have 9 and we have six for the second case so this is how we use the function overloading and sometimes some cases it may help you solve a problem during your journey developing a react.js application hello everybody welcome back in this section we are going to talk about component patterns some of the component patterns that are common in react development we're going to start with the hoc and i'm going to give you a practice in here then we will continue on the solution so what is a higher order component we are going to explore a uh, an example a very simple example project in here just to tell you what is your homework and what is the concept we're going to teach you so in this code that you can find attached to this lecture we have here two files position.tsx and the get pose get pose is nothing just separated this function you could have put it in the same position that tsx doesn't matter so it receives uh, the mouse event which is attached to a dev for example and based on that it's going to return the x and the y of the current position of the mouse pointer that simple and of course we are going to import it in this file the position.tsx it's in here import so what is this position.tsx it's basically a uh, simple functional component that in the app.tsx we are calling it like this nothing special right so for this most position uh, component in here we are doing the logic of detecting the x and y or the position of the most whenever we move it over a dev okay it's going to detect the change in the x and y and then it displays it in here if you go to the browser running this project you will see something like this so basically, this is the whole dev that you are seeing in the code, and this is the X and Y. Based on the change, it's going to update it. All right, let's get back to the code. So basically, this is the whole idea in here. But what is the problem? What's the issue in here? The issue is that this component, which is the mouse position, you know, uh, is only or is mainly responsible for displaying this X and Y into this JSX code, okay? But as you can see, it is tightly coupled with the logic of calculating X and Y. The codes in here, the codes all over in here, is there a way of separating them inside an outer component and then only passing the X and Y to this component? Yes, of course, we're gonna explore three component patterns which is the hoc in this lesson and then we are going to see the render props i believe and then we're going to see how to do this uh tackling using the custom hooks so let's start with the hoc before that i believe let me just walk you through the codes a little bit in here so in this file nothing too fancy simple we have this uh, initial state in here which has an x and y and as i told you you don't need to define the types of this in x and y if you hover over initial state typescript is very smart you know detected the type for us and we have a very simple reducer in here which has the state and the action and the action is simply has this update position action type which is uh, going to have a type of this string only one case update position whenever the most changes and the payload if you pay attention is this utility helper from typescript which is partial so what is partial first if you just eliminate this from here okay now if you hover over this payload you will see that it is x and y why because you said it's type of initial state what is the type of initial state this is the type and simply you said this is this type is going to be equal of the type of this but what is this partial the partial simply tells that i want you to be same as the type of this but all of them will be optional it's like this you know this is what's happening in here so basically the type of this payload in here will be something like this let me just copy paste it quickly from here and gonna be something like this okay so the type of this payload it'll be something like this in here 
okay these x and y will be optional why are they optional because this partial so partial means take whatever type you have and make all of its keys to be partial so what is the opposite of partial if you are interested required if you want to make them all of them for example if they the type of this initial state were optional and you wanted to revert it to make it required you would use required but now let's stick with partial all right so we have this very simple reducer which has this single case in case we fire this dispatch it's going to update the state for us and inside our component in here we are destructuring the x and y and the dispatch of course when we have this very simple update position uh, helper function so this update position is a simple uh, function which is going to be used or memoized using use callback hook so why are we doing this you know it's a kind of performance thing okay you can simply eliminate this and put this dispatch instead of all the whole thing but doing it like this you know use callback takes two arguments the first one is the function that you want to memoize and the second is the dependency array so we are simply telling react only whenever dispatch changes we want you to recreate this function okay because uh, usually sometimes in a single render um, some things uh, happen and a function uh, like this okay will be initiated every time your uh, component re-renders which is a performance issue okay if you want to prevent that you can memoize your function using use callback hook and of course you need to give it the type of the function that uh, you are going to consume uh, the argument you are going to consume which is the event in here as you can see it is going to be a mouse event handler like this okay so this is about the update position the mission of this update position is very clear whenever the um in this dev okay which is the blue dev changes or the most starts moving it's going to call update position and it is based on that going to update the x and y using the reducer all right enough talking about this i think you have the idea and of course at the end it's going to return this and with the updated x and y what is your mission your mission is very simple first of all i want you to decouple this mouse position turn it into a presentational component what is presentational component presentational component is a stateless component it only displays data okay it doesn't care about the logic so we are going to have a higher order component that takes care of all this x and y calculation and passes or wraps this presentational component wrapped with the x and y so the mission is very simple first you create a presentational component called display mouse position or any other name you like which is stateless it only receives x and y and you will create a higher order component called with mouse move which is going to do all these calculations including this or you can change it even from instead of reducer you can use use a state if you like and finally you need to wrap the presentational component with the hoc that you created in the app.tsx okay if you want a hint you may need to use the omit utility helper in creating the hoc you know, somewhere in the hoc you may need to encounter this all right so let's pause the video here and when you do the business get back to me so we do it together all right welcome back so let's get to it here first of all we are going to create a directory in this component folder called hoc you know higher order component and inside of it we can create two files first of all we are going to create with or let me go with the display mouse position for example or display mouse move.tsx and then we are going to have the file that says with mouse position.ts okay so this is which is such with with this kind of common practice for the hocs is going to hold all the logic for calculating the x and y and then passing it to the display maps this is the presentational part of the story okay so for the presentational uh, part it's very very basic and easy let me do a small copy pasting so i'm getting down in here this mouse position i'm going to copy or let me just create it first so say const const dis display mouse move 
which is going to be like this and definitely it's going to receive some props we're going to take care of that in a second for the return we are going to have this in here okay it's going to return this uh, thing in here so for the props we need to figure that the first prop is x and the second one is y so basically we say x y and then we have this update position function so let me just you know change the name in here i'm going to say for example on mouse move i'm going to say on mouse move because it's not going to be that update function this update function is going to be moved inside the with mouse so the better call in here will be the on mouse move okay another name something like that so now we have yelling from typescript it says hey what are the types in here Okay, so this is story or this course actually is about the TypeScript, in fact, not the HOC thing. So let's focus on solving the types. For the types, first of all, the easy part is that we can separate it just to make things clear. I'm going to create a type and maybe we need to export it so we can use it later on in case we need it. We say type and the name of this, which is display mouse move followed by props is going to be something like this. So X a number. You agree x a number y is also a simple number the positions of the mouse and the on mouse move is going to be a mouse event handler i believe so let me just check it so for example this dev in here which has this event on mouse move we need to give it a handler and basically it's very easy it should be mouse move handler come on import let's do it manually actually i think I made a mistake in here let's change the name it should be mouse event handler no okay let me do it hand i say import this dude from react okay so we are done in here okay the only thing is just to mention this display mouse move props in here congratulations now we have our display mouse move in place and ready to receive x and y and the handler for the on mouse move so it displays the x and y now the real business is that we need to implement the mouse move position with mouse position which is going to wrap this component for us and also we need to export this i believe so we say export export const display okay let's go to the with mouse position and see what we do here let's start by creating it and say with mouse position position nice is going to be basically a function that returns another function that is going to return jsx or basically stuff like that so to memorize this is in fact completely correct to say that every hoc is a function that returns a function that returns jsx that simple so this is what it means in here let me create the body and we are going to write the types and the logic one by one so after this we have thing like this in here because the component that we are going to receive as a prop in this with mouse position can be any component you know we are not uh, really sure about the type of it we need to define a generic in here like this so we say t but t cannot be any or stuff like that it needs to at least i believe extend the empty object you know it shouldn't be uh, undefined or anything else if you don't specify this you're gonna have some kind of warnings from uh, TypeScript, so it helps to avoid some uh, bugs related to undefined types the main prop of every hoc is the component that is going to wrap so we're gonna say component component and here for the type we are going to make it something generic we're going to say react dot component type component type i think i'm going to need to remove this from here and here okay so what we are going to receive with this with mouse position is a component okay typescript says what is the type of it 
we are going to say it's going to be a react component type and for the default value of it we are going to pass the uh, props the type of props of uh, the props that are going to be received with this component because this component itself is going to accept some or is going to receive some props correct for those props we need to specify the types what is uh, or what is the type of uh, those props can you guess very easy the component that we are going to receive is something like this or basically every component that is going to consume this HOC it is going to talk about the X the Y and of course a mouse event handler so we are going to import this from here this display mouse move props okay and it's gonna be something like this inside this function in here we are going to have the argument props which is going to have the type of T which means we want everything that uh, is inside of this t except whatever that exists in this type what does it mean it means in simple words i want you to remove every type okay that exists in this one exclude it from this t which is generic argument in here and give me back everything is left into these props okay why we do that because inside of this display mask move props we have x y and also on mouse move we want to update them because the x and y is changed right and then we will pass the updated version of them down along with these props fine so for this t doing this it's very simple we are going to say omit if you remember this is the utility helper that says take everything inside the generic t except key of let me just copy paste it from here down there okay now we're ready to do the logic for the logic we are going to do some copy pasting so from the original file position.tsx we are going to take this from here copy it and paste it in here let's do some imports actually i'm going to use a user state in here because we're not going to need the user do so it's going to add a extra uh, layer of complexity so i say use state use state come on so let's just import it ourselves from react i'm going to say import use state from react okay so uh, we're not gonna do this reducer anymore and the initial state is also going to be inside of here or we can simply just copy paste it here like this okay so now we have our user state ready and we're not gonna need this from here we simplify it by saying x and y and set position set position okay so we have this set position to update the x and y and we have this x and y to read the updated values now for updating them we are going to create another helper function here that is going to be set update position and this is going to use use callback hook for memoizing a piece of function for us let me say like that use callback use callback okay so use callback is going to receive a function but you need to tell it what kind of function if you remember the function that we are going to pass is exactly existing here you see i don't need to navigate it's ready for me so i just paste it in here and i'm going to say that yeah import it from react why not i think from react yes correct and we need to give it two parameters first the callback function and then the dependency list for the callback function i'm going to say that you are going to receive an event okay and based on that event you are going to do some stuff and the dependency array is going to be the uh I believe it's going to be the set position okay so whenever this set position changes you are going to recreate yourself okay this is kind of performance uh, tackling thing okay you can, it's not mandatory but just to add a little bit of you know logic in here make it a little bit complicated so whenever we have an event we are going to grab the new event which is this one and update the X and Y for that the mission is very easy we're gonna get the x and y do you remember this file in here get pose get position so we say get 
position it's imported yes and simply we are going to give it the event it can take care of returning the x and y and then when we have the new we're going to say set position and x and y like this fine so our helper function is completely ready now after this we are going to have the return statement exactly after this we're going to say return and inside this return we are going to return the component that is wrapped which is this one component okay and let's pass the props first we need to pass uh, or spread any other props you know props that uh, originally come with this uh, wrapping or presentational components that we don't care about them you know they are anything other than this x y and the uh, you know the, the 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 handler function okay how to do that we just spread them using this spread operator in here we say spread everything come on props okay but we need to specify the type of them so we are going to say as t because you know props in here originally of type this t generic and then we need to give it the x which is calculated in here the y is also calculated in here and finally we need to give it the on mouse move which is the update position that's it okay so now ready to test everything we just get back to this app.tsx and wrap everything together we can simply create a wrapper we can name it wrapper or any other name you like for example i don't know with mouse wrapper or things like that and first you need to mention the hoc which is with mouse move and feed it with the presentational component which is the display move. now simply you need to display it in here as a child we say wrapper and go to the browser to test it and see if it's working let's verify refresh and yeah it's working so what is the purpose of having an hoc in the first place having hoc is good first for testability okay when you loosely couple your components such as this you know uh, displaying the only you know keeping this component simple for uh, stateless when you want to unit test it or do a test in storybook this will be very much easier because you don't have all the complicated logic in here in case of you know x and y of mouse movement or a fetch from the api testing this is much easier plus the other benefit is that reusability you can use this component in more than place okay it has uh, you know you know perhaps you want to get x and y from any other uh, location of your project so this is more reusable plus also this hoc is used uh, reusable somewhere else perhaps you are going to need to x and y of your uh mouse this is very very basic example and demonstration okay don't judge me with oh my god how super cool but seriously the functionality is super cool and what uh, the purpose we used it in this lecture and the upcoming lectures we will then talk about other um, component pattern is just to teach you how to use some TypeScript helpers like Omit and other stuff like Extend and blah 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 you know dealing with the TypeScript TypeScript uh, thing in the next one I believe we're going to talk about the render props and how to solve the same issue but with a different pattern welcome back everybody so we are going to uh, solve the same issue with our mouse mouse position but this time we're uh, using the pattern which is called render props you know it's a little bit you know older than the hoc but it worth mentioning it's something powerful sometimes so what is the idea of the render props the idea is that you create a wrapper component which does some calculation or a fetching from the api and then spreads or passes down the result as a props to the children it receives very simple very basic so for doing that let's create a folder we're going to call it render props like that inside of it we're going to create a file render render mouse let's say dot tsx or you know tsx not bad so first of all we're gonna create it as a constant and we're gonna name it render mouse position or whatever name you want to give it and it's going to look like same as a functional component 
okay but as we said finally it is going to pass something down to children so definitely it's going to receive children as props children in here and now it yells at us type script says hey what is the type of children if you remember we could do it uh, somehow using the react node so i'm going to do some stuff from the previous very simple just defining the type of this i'm going to say type and it is going to be basically a type that we say we have children as props and it's going to be something like this it's going to look like props okay and the props are going to have so because the children itself is going to be think of it as a function okay that is going to receive props and the props in here are going to be defined x is going to be a number and y is going to be a number don't get confused when we use it you're going to be more comfortable with that and finally it's going to return react dot react node now we need to set it in here saying that children is going to be of this type so if you hover over this children it will say that it is a kind of functional component that receive props and the type of the props as we mentioned in the render mouse position props itself i'm going to fix it. it's not like that number number and stuff so let's just give it props to keep the standards yeah like that come on okay so we are good to go now our children are ready there are some little bit of issues with this i'm going to fix later on so the first thing we need a state saying that position and for setting the position from use a state and of course the initial state is going to be x zero and y zero okay very well then we are going to use our update position helper once again we say update position which is just a simple function and we're going to set the type for it not bad M mouse event handler from react and it's going to receive an event same as always and simply whenever the event changes and this is going to get fired it's going to say set position and from there it's going to say x going to be event dot let me see x and y i believe it's going to be event dot y this is x not page x hmm let me see yes yeah, this is definitely needs to be client x and here we have client y fine so our uh x and y based on this are ready our event handler for the mouse movement is ready so yeah we just need to pass it to the children that simple so finally you need to say return and inside of this we are going to return the dev in here just like this and for the dev i'm going to give it some class name just to have some styles and it's going to be relative container container i believe that's correct and on mouse hey on mouse move we are going to say update position and inside of it we are going to have our beautiful children components children and for each children we are going to give a set of x which is going to be position dot x and y is going to be position dot y so as a wrap up we are doing nothing but doing all the calculation related to our business logic for example the x and y of our mouse event okay inside of a uh, render you can say render component whatever you like using this pattern and then we are going to pass the result of our calculation in case x and y all right to the children so for using this component in here we simply need to go back to our app.tsx inside of it we are going to say render mouse position 
and inside of it as the children okay this is everything that comes in here is that children remember so what do we need to pass to these children if you hover over it it will says it receives an x and y which is we are passing it in here after everything so definitely here for doing this we are going to say uh, we have x and y received in here and finally we are going to return something okay uh, let me just keep keep things cleaner in here I'm going to create a file let's call it for example um, children huh let's say children or no let me say display mouse tsx same as the previous hoc example I'm going to say um, const display display come on what's going on display uh, let's me name mouse position for keeping it short it's going to receive X and Y and as you know both X is going to be a number and Y is also a number and finally we have this down in here so it is going to return simply let me get back and do some copy pasting from this position in here okay so it is going to return this section very well so I'm going to say you return this and the X and Y are the same not confused of course everything is just repeated we need to export it of course from here now instead of writing all of these things in here and make it like a messy thing just keep things cleaner huh I'm going to say display mouse position and we need to pass the X and Y which as I'm going to say X is going to be the X and Y is going to be the Y okay or as you have attached to the lecture the you can keep the code simply from here and put it in here and then call it in here so I just separated the file for you okay as a wrap-up I'm not gonna take your time in here it's very simple this is the render props pattern now you learned about the pattern itself and also you learned about some of the you know not something very much new related to props I mean uh, type of props in here but that was something like this so how you deal with children inside render props and stuff like that hello dear students and welcome back so in this video we are going to solve or to be more you know precise to make the mouse position example clear or I mean you know cleaner more simpler and stuff like that more reusable or testable <laughs> whatever you call it using another common pattern which is named custom hooks I'm sure all of you are aware of it and know how to use it but let's do it using TypeScript and see if we can grasp any TypeScript related knowledge about it so the first plan that we have is to create a directory here we call it hook now inside of it we're gonna say a new file use um, what to name it hmm? let's say mouse position dot very hard name to say okay inside of it we are going to create our beautiful custom movie. it's very very simple gonna be something related but just let's do it together once as a uh, plan right yeah so we're gonna call it use mouse position and it's going to take zero arguments now inside of it everything is going to be a repetition we are going to uh, steal some stuff I believe first let's create a user state for ourselves or yeah let's just do it here I say X and Y and for setting the position I'm going to say ta -ta 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 -ta. why why do that let's just copy paste everything huh do you like copy pasting I like it so much because it saved me time so let's do it from two, 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 two here yeah from here I'm going to say boom initial state I don't need you I can say X zero and Y zero and of course for the user state which is yelling yeah like that oh, come on so let's do it manually VS code sometimes get mad at me so no problem I do the business myself from react yo we're ready here okay so what is the next step 
is to update the position for doing that i believe maybe we can do some other copy pasting in here yeah it has a callback so because we are going to use it and to prevent any wasted renders or repeating in renders let's just keep things like this okay again vs code not importing no problem and we are taking this also for the import and we are going to import get position come on yeah good so ta -ta 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 -ta. yeah everything is repeated you know if you need any explanations i think you find it a lot of it in the last two videos so we have this update position the x and y is ready now we simply need to return everything so we say return and like an object let's say x y and of course we say on mouse move we are going to tell it update position like that now let's consume it for consuming this for example let's assume in our uh after tsx we want to consume this use mouse position for that we simply can say constant let's destructure the x y and on mouse move i believe and we are going to say use mouse position of course very well and inside of this let me do some other copy pasting from get position for example or even inside this one i can take the section or the whole thing from here copy it and i'm going to paste it and now the on mouse is ready x is there and y is there okay so let's verify that on browser and see if it's work yeah sounds things are good let's refresh Mm -hmm. so congratulations now you know how to use some of the very most patterns component patterns in react using type script if you have any questions don't hesitate to reach me in the qa section hello and welcome back everybody so in this video we are going to talk about another um you know let's say pattern or perhaps feature you can achieve using typescript and of course react for example in this very small demo project we have two small nice buttons the primary button let's assume and secondary button and perhaps you have another button like destructive button or try a trip button or anything but just keep things simple we have just two buttons in here for the code we have a simple component in here the button which you pass children to it in this case it's only string as you can see here we just have strings and the type of it and based on the type you have to give it class name okay so the class name is the type that you pass to it if you pass it primary it's going to be primary styled or secondary styled and the style i believe is in the app that yes it's in here so that you can check the css if you like but there is an issue what if i say like this is this correct if you see the result is like this you know is this secondary or primary nobody knows so this is an issue i want to uh, have a feature that somehow limits the combination of props okay if you have primary then you cannot have secondary and if you have secondary you cannot have primary i need some kind of a hint to be given to the developers that are working on this project let's assume that if they say if they do something like you know secondary and pri primary type script would give them like yell at them you know say hey you know what you should have only one type you know primary or secondary you cannot have both some feature like that to be simple how to limit the composition of props on a component for doing that let's get back to our button dot tsx and start working on this so the basic idea is that we are going to have a function that is going to build the class name for us okay it's going to read the uh, props that you pass to it in here and based on boolean values true or false it's going to generate the class name for us and the class name that is going to be generated is going to be on the primary or secondary or any other value that you have okay it's just one from the list for that let's uh come in here and say const let's say build class names or let's give it like this names and why do we say it like this you know building class names it's because our styles are based on class names okay in any other condition you can figure it out yourself 
not gonna be that difficult so we are going to have in here classes so you need to pass this an argument classes and definitely you are going to be yelled at by TypeScript says hey what's the type of a classes we are going to tell it that classes is going to be an object of keys and value the key of each item is going to be string for example primary secondary tritary and the value is going to be a boolean you know true or false if primary is true then the rest of the crew are going to be false for example if primary is true the secondary should be false or if that later one is true the other or the first one is going to be true something like that or false let's just keep it like this and don't get confused we are going to do it in action and you will find out what's going on in here so and at the end we are going to return a string which is the final class name we are going to give to our button and inside of it we are going to do something very simple first of all let's uh, create a uh, variable we say class name or names or whatever you want to give it a name in here it's an empty string we are going to loop or iterate through the classes which is an array of uh, or just an object actually of key and values so we are going to say for const okay say we have key and value of object dot entries you no know, pure JavaScript huh and from classes like this and inside each round that we loop we want to do a check if the value okay the boolean is true it means that for example if the primary the key is primary for example and the value of it is true then we want to include it in the class names correct and we are going to say in that case class names should be key which is primary secondary whatever plus let's keep it like this for now i think i'm gonna need it at the end of course we are going to say return class names dot let's trim it for now okay so now our build class names is complete let's see how to use it for using it inside our button which is going to be exposed we are going to receive a few props the first prop is children and right now in this example our children are going to be only simple strings we, we are not going to receive any other you know let's say other primitive like number or a react component as a child just the strings that's why we're saying children as a string in here and other than that we are going to receive actually two possible values either primary or secondary okay so we are going to say in here we are expecting to receive primary or secondary all right and for each value of them let's give them a default of false and also a default in here of false but it's yelling at us it says it's not in your types let's define a type in here for our props of the button on the top on there we are first creating a type for the button props okay this is the very basic type that despite we are passing the primary or the secondary okay we need it for the children and that is going to say uh let's just take it from here children is going to be string so the first thing we need is to say button button props what's going on here button props it should be visible okay and we are going to give it oh i think i missed something in here i just need to give it cool braces i believe yeah so let's do it like let me do a check what do we have i think we need to remove this one and this one let me get rid of this and this okay so now the very basic type that our button needs for the props is button types and we are going to figure out what type our uh, other props are going to have and here is the trick so we are going to define two other types for our button the first one 
primary is mandatory secondary is optional and the other one which we, we can call it the secondary uh, button props the primary is optional the secondary is mandatory how to do that very very simple we are going to say primary button props okay we are going to say primary to be boolean of course and secondary which is also a boolean is going to be optional which means whenever it is this type okay the uh, consumer of this button component needs to provide the primary but secondary is optional okay for the other button we are going to say type secondary button props we're going to say exactly the same but this time oh sorry i just missed something in here i will tell you what i will just tell you okay so uh in the second secondary button props primary is a boolean in fact and in here for the primary we said that when you provide the primary you tell your button components in here that you want it to be primary it shouldn't allow you to have a secondary type at the same time so this is not going to be boolean this is going to be let's say never okay which is you know you should never provide it and also in the other case whatever in our uh, secondary button props type our secondary is true primary needs to be never so i don't know if you get it or not let's just keep it like this and we are going to use it in action and see so down in here we are going to say so first you button components first of all you need to have the button props base type and also you need to have either primary button props or secondary button props like this okay and now instead of this type in here we are going to say uh remove this and inside this button body we are going to say const class names we are going to consume that build build come on build class names function that we just created and we are going to pass to it the props as you can see it needs to be key value so we say primary and secondary so whenever we pass this okay based on that it's going to create them for us and also TypeScript is going to take care of yelling at the consumer of the button if you provide both of these true it's going to yell at you it says only one of them is based on the types that we defined in here so at the end we are going to say class names let me save it uh does not exist on button props why doesn't oh i think i missed children no this is correct so what's the issue i think that the issue oh this needs to be outside i just saved it on mistake okay and this needs to be removed now i think we are on the road let me just check it let me give it something else in here okay now we should be good yes so let's go and test it now in here you need to specify whether it is primary button or a secondary button how to do that very simple for the primary you can either say primary you can keep it like this or for more readability you can say uh primary to be true Okay, because it's a value but you can just keep it simple and if you want to say you can say it like this primary so this is primary and this is secondary okay as you can see it refresh and get back to the browser it's working okay now now the magic imagine that by accident you tell it okay I want to primary and be secondary see this is the thing it's yelling at me it says type children string primary blah 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 is not assignable and it needs to be one of them types of property secondary are incompatible so it shows you an incompatible of uh, you know uh, secondary and primary it says you cannot have secondary here you can either have secondary or primary so as a wrap up this is how you can limit the prop composition or 
combination in a component using for example because here we have this kind of style examples and based on the class names we did a build class name thing in here that iterates over the object of uh, primary and secondary which is coming from here and we, here we feed it but the more important piece is the types that we defined in here by being optional one of them and also putting it to never it's going to set type script to do that kind of yelling that we want it in case anything goes uh, against what we expect